And hello, everybody. Hello. Welcome Hi. To <laughs> I didn't know if that was a, a thing. What was what was that? I don't know if it's a. Th do I did I have to say hello then? Because I feel like I've really ruined the flow of this already. No, no, no. no. <laughs> it's good, man. It's good. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure it's just the time difference. That's what's happening. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Ask me a question, and you'll you'll get an answer in about five hours. Okay. Nice. <laughs> Bet. <laughs> oh, I'll expect it through email, ah. nonetheless. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Tavern Talks. Tonight, we're going to be talking about the new Unearthed Arcana, the Gothic lineages. Uh, but first, before we get into that, I am Jonesy, Dungeon Master for our Eberron campaign that we run on Saturdays, and I have with me two awesome guests. Um, if you guys want to go ahead and introduce yourselves. Sure. I'm Ian. I play in the Eberron campaign on Saturdays. I run the ga the Ghost, Mos Ghost Marsh, Ghost Marsh, Salt Marsh, Ghosts of Salt Marsh campaign on Mondays, and know that I participate in these most of the time. Oh, we're starting off real strong tonight. Talking's hard. Words. Uh, I'm James. Uh, I uh, have a stream called Dragon Wheels. Uh, 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 in which, at uh, some point, hopefully, we'll find a computer slash internet provider that works well enough for us to stream. Uh, good content on there. Um, but um, we're, 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 tomorrow, we're starting a uh, retroverse campaign, um, which is all kind of 80s, 90s, um, kind of uh, supplement to Dungeons and Dragons, which is going to be absolutely mental uh, and really good fun. So check it out! Absolutely. Hey, uh, drop that Twitch link. Speaking of, it's twitch.tv slash dragonwheels00, right? That's the one. All right. I'm going to post that in chat and just spam it a whole bunch. So make sure anybody in chat right now, right now, go follow. Don't wait. Don't wait. Cannot wait. There's a link. There God is. damn, that's there a lot is, of links. Go click Yay. On it. Go it's click me. On it and go follow it. We have gracious. Like epic, epic level boss battle music going in the background right now. Do we? Uh, hello, hello, hello. We're just getting started. It's a perfect timing. Yeah, let's switch to something maybe not so. I was about to say, why are you playing more battle music? <laughs> well, I, I do it in the beginning to get everybody hype about what we're discussing. And it's gothic lineages nonetheless. So it's super hype stuff. I guess that's fair. Gotta get hyped up. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But when you're trying to talk and you and you got just oh, in the background, it just it just messes you all up. I I didn't hear it, so I had the very much the wrong kind of tone for my introduction. Do you, do I can't either. Do you want to read it? <laughs> um, uh, yeah, but I, 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 I no 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 it's fine. Okay, all right. <laughs> I I can't hear the music, so Jonesy, if you could like just hum it for me, and then I can maybe over the top do a little. Yeah, yeah, what's yeah. the music? What's it'll the music be, sound be, like right now? It'll be in the email after afterwards. Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah, we'll yeah. do that next. Time. God damn it! Oh god. <laughs> so <laughs> gothic lineages. <laughs> we're we're we are on point and we are on on key. This is what we're doing. Gothic lineages. For those who don't know, Wizards releases things called unearthed arcana every so often that they do as playtest material where they'll just. Vomit something out for the players. That is, I'm sure the process is much more refined than that. But they will put something out to the players for them to play test. Give it a, like, I think it's a week. Uh, it's not a lot of time at all. And then they'll ask for a survey and, uh, or they'll put out a survey and ask for a bunch of feedback. And that's actually where they're at with it right now. This most recent UA was something I'm really hype about just because the theme is cool. And I really like that sort of stuff is Gothic lineages. So they've released three new almost call them races, but they are, I think, intentionally trying to get away from that, that verbiage. So lineages. They're effectively races. Right. Well, effectively races as we know them. But I think if there's, I don't know, a 6E or a 5.5E, whatever you're looking at, you're probably not going to see races in those. That would be, that would be my bet. I think uh, it's yeah. su sub race. And I think it's two subclasses. What's that? The Gothic lineages? Yeah. Uh, there aren't any subclass unless they published a second half. I've got a subrace. Uh, maybe I read the completely the wrong thing. I just Googled Gothic lineages. Should have been. Oh, this is Gothic heroes. Oh, wow. I'm going to have so <laughs> many opinions. Uh oh. 
we'll, we'll get a link in chat to what we're talking about too. Yeah, uh, so I, I, I can, I, I'll pretend that I know exactly what I'm on about. Yeah, yeah, no worries. <laughs> no worries. Uh, this I link, do that all this the link time. in chat right now is for the chat only, James. It's not for you, okay? Yeah, yeah. That's what we're ta discussing about uh, right there, chat. The Gothic lineages. So, which are going to be the the Dampir, the Hexblood, and the Reborn. But first impressions, we're going to get we're, we're, Ian. You're going to kick us off yes. with first, first okay. impressions. Okay, first impressions, just like yeah. overall. Yeah, just overall impressions. Overall, I think they're really cool. Um, there's there's some there is some pretty steep variety in like actually how good some of them are in comparison to the others. But I think I do like their flavor is all really cool and they're all very distinct. And so they can be like real, re they're, they're really good for if you want to play like a certain style of character or certain, like there's a, there's an archetype or something you're shooting for. Uh, all three of them can help you land those really easily and really effectively. That's my, broad opinion on it as a whole <clears throat> keep keep going keep going <laughs> nah, now jones gotta say something the themes are really cool to me i i am all about the goth goth classes or goth lineages 100 percent. like th this is this is my aesthetic as far as D D goes i love this shit so we were just talking maybe a day or two uh before a day or two before this actually came out that man dampier is not in it not in 5e because i was actually playing a dampier in pathfinder uh before we swapped over to 5e yeah man, well, you, like you remember pierre shit. yeah i re i remember you just completely cock blocking me from a kill so <laughs> wait a minute what? bitch <laughs> with uh phantasmal killer from pathfinder you dick what i i did that first no -uh. no I I hit really? that thing with a they maximized in power bone shatter and I was like all right oh. I did a lot of damage and then you were like phantasmal killers you fucking hooker <laughs> I hate you so much <laughs> see there's a, there's a grudge being held here Jesus I I might have been a little upset about that <laughs> okay guys calm down let's talk about our feelings <laughs> no <But> anywho. <laughs> Anywho, I will say, Jones, I am amused by that being your aesthetic for for D and D characters when you're playing a pink frog in my campaign. One, he's purple. Okay. Two, I don't know, he, dog. He's got black leather armor, and that's good enough. <laughs> I don't know. I've seen that picture. He looks pink. No, I I am about this aesthetic. I'm not saying everything I play. Oh, okay, is, okay, okay. Is, is tailored towards this, right? I got you. Like, okay. it, it, don't try to nail me down. But <laughs> this this stuff, I'm all about it. Yeah. Oh yeah. It's always super. To turn Jonesy's audio up a bit. Yeah. Sure. Am I? Am I a little bit too quiet? I can maybe scoot into the mic or just turn my mic up. Gotta you hit guys, him with the boomer zoomer. Yeah. You guys, let me know if uh if I am too loud now. You're not saying anything. <laughs> I'm sorry. I was uh, reading chat. <laughs> I was reading I, chat. Yeah. Well, like, having, yeah. I was a bit quiet. Way those... better now. Awesome. Glad we do that. <laughs> Want to add some edge onto your edge? Yes, like, absolutely. They're fantastic. Edge, like, they're great. Lord Supreme. That is what we're about they're so here. So good. I will say the hex blood is way less edgy than either the reborn or the dampier. I, 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 I I, I, I've caught up now. I've caught up. Okay. okay. All right. So ben. overall, overall thoughts, thoughts and opinions. Uh, generally, I think it like in terms of adding flavour to the uh, ra races, I guess, if you're using the same terminology, uh, I, I really like all all three of them actually, and and I like uh, the kind of new options they give you when they give you like an origin um, to give you a bit more flavour within the kind of character that you've chosen, which I really really like. Um, I also played a Dampier in. Um, Pathfinder, uh, a, a kind of a vampire hunting down pair. It, um, it was it was great fun. Um, but, Did you play Blade? Uh, yeah, I I was playing playing Blade. I essentially made Blade. Yeah, okay. that was that right. was nice. Yeah. <laughs> Hell but, yeah! I mean, when when Tasha's came out, I I was playing. I mean, as most of us were who played the new kind of Artificer subclass, we're playing Iron Man for quite some time. So, right. um, 
if they, if they could get more superhero type things into D and D, I'm sure I'd be happy. Oh God, yeah, who doesn't like impersonating superheroes? Yeah, I, I'm not. I'm kind of uh, flicking through kind of the kind of abilities and stuff. It does seem like some have significantly more advantages than than the others, from what I can see. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, there is there is um, one of these specifically that has significantly less power than the other two. Yeah. I don't um, know if anybody can guess which that is. But um, it it, but, uh, it does. They all they all look really like I I would I can. I, I like reading the uh, an Arthur kind of ones when when you read it you go oh I've just thought of an awesome character oh, yeah. for for that idea um, and yeah that's what all these do yeah oh man as a DM, so I like I like making story arcs off of them and I, I've actually done so with their last UA uh, or one of their last UAs with the uh, what is it the Drake Warden and the way of the what is it? Ancestral dragon or something like that? It's it's something like that. It's it's the monk that can shoot fire out of their hands. Yeah, yeah. They get so. they get breath weapons out of their. Oh wait, no. I, I think they actually breathe it. I think they actually do use a breath weapon. You got it, me really weird. excited for a second there when you said breath weapons out of there, and I went what? Uh, it's, it's like I I was wanting to think that it was out of their ass. hands. But oh, I'm pretty okay. sure I, I think it actually states in the wording that you are using. They are breathing it out. So, I, but I'm, monk I'm, get breath I'm, weapons. I'm less interested now. <laughs> <laughs> it's just so fucking cool. It's like the the. I, I actually hold on. I'm about to go off on a tangent. That's not even the UA we're talking about. Skirt. <laughs> Stop. It's, fine. it's what we're here for. Those are so good. I just love. I love that UA. Tangents. Drake Warden and that is in the monk subclass are so cool. But uh, but yeah. So do we want to go through these in in any particular order, Jones? Or you just what do you want? To, how you want to do this? I got nothing, man. So if you got something, you're you're dying to get off your chest. I got nothing oh, as man. far as order goes, except for the order the page is in. I, I said might as well just go down the line, start with Dampier and go down. Sure, we're going to skip past all of this other stuff. Uh, I <laughs> guess I guess it's worth kind of touching on. Yeah, sure. Well, it's, it's like, because these, these th this bit, like, applies specifically to these in this UA, but can also apply to other things. Like, in, I, in being able yeah, to create totally. a more unique character. Because I, I think, none of I think these get a, uh, an ability score or languages or anything. Yeah, the whole ability score thing, I, I think, is super interesting because, it, like, it, quite, it, even, as recently as this week, I was trying to make a character and went, but the the kind of the creature, the, the race that I'm making doesn't fit with the concepts that I have in my head because I don't want strength to be really good. I want, I want decks. And so being able to swap that around is... is kind of super cool because it isn't generalizing an entire species um which is great i think we all agree that that is great um absolutely yeah we've actually discussed it on an episode that, before yeah where we that was what we, i was saying is that this reminds me a lot of the stuff from tasha's right now, i mean i think it specifically says uh we released yeah. some stuff in tasha's yeah design note changed changes to racial traits in 2020 tasha's cauldron of everything blah 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 it basically says they're they're pulling this from Tasha's and they're going to start applying it at a much broader level. This is where I think we're going to get into, you know, in, in a next version, uh, whenever Wizards, you know, gets around to that or they're just done with 5e, we're going to get away from the word race and it's going to be a really difficult for a lot of us old heads that know them as the orc race or whatever. I think we're going to get to lineages. I think that's what, what it's going to be the about. orc lineage. Yeah. That doesn't, that doesn't make sense though. For these specifically, these Gothic things, it makes sense because you started off as your race, but then you, you got this lineage or whatever. And that's what became the defining enough for you to change your physical characteristics. Like you still are a human technically, like visually, like you can still be a Goliath or a Dragonborn or whatever. Like you can be a Dragonborn Dampier. It doesn't say you can't because it says you can be any medium creature. Right. But I don't think you can generalize that. They might okay. now. They might still I'm call it not wrong. races. I one I one hundred percent don't. I agree that they're not going to call them races because apparently calling them races is super not politically correct. Whatever they're going to call them something different. I don't think you can. I don't think they'll function this all the same way though. I don't think it's possible without it not making any fucking sense that's like how isn't that how like second edition pathfinder is doing things i think well, so I, yeah weird. i mean i think that, uh, like, they're just gonna take off the oh you can only learn these languages or you can only you, you all of these people are evil which 
I think Eberron started kind of when with the campaign setting did quite a good job. Yeah, they of going, did a lot of that. Like, like the like are all evil. Yeah, they're yeah. like they trend towards chaotic and neutral and stuff. Like they're like you're not good or evil. But they're just kind of like they're vibing. They might be a little like impulsive, but yeah, yeah. they did. And, like, that. if, that's true. In my opinion, like I very rarely create a creature, and I never ever give it like a alignment. I, I think alignment's ridiculous as a concept. Like whoever, anyone who's lawful good, if they break the law, that makes them an interesting character. Like if they're continually lawful good throughout, then they're predictable, and it's 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 not interesting. I, I much prefer just I like I much prefer the personality traits and the bonds and the flaws and things because that's what people are like. And so I think it's good to go, look, here's, here's an entire race, and they're all different because... But we're not going to call them a race because apparently that's racist. Yeah, right. it's, it's less... So they're, they're going to call them something different. I definitely know that's where we're going to go. I do... I am. I was I was a fan of it from Tosh. I'm a fan of it now of being like, you get a, a plus two and a plus one, do with them as you will. Absolutely. Because that just opens up so many new and interesting, like, combinations. Like, you can have your you know your your races that it's like okay well you can have your orc like caster because other like before it's like yeah you get a bonus you're kind of your strength go fuck yourself if you want to play a wizard you dumbass and you back <laughs> up even further than that you're not even looking just at just a bonus to con and strength but you're looking at a penalty to your charisma <laughs> right so yeah exactly so it was just like you're you're you are you're being shoehorned i'm i'm super a fan of it's like okay do what you will with your bonuses the uniqueness of each race is in their traits like the unique racial features they get like yeah you know what you may not get a ton of use out of it but getting uh the like relentless uh something or whatever that is that orcs get where it's like you go down you can come up with one hit point like, that'd be cool regardless of who you're playing. Like, you could be a caster and it's like, they say, like, yeah, we got the squish. And he's like, no, bitch, I'm alive. What's up? And like, now that they don't have the charisma kind of penalty, then I think we just get a lot more sexy orcs kind of like fan fiction, which I'm really <laughs> Wait a minute. on board with. Hold up. Wait, what? Well, so, oh, Tavern Talks. No, it's diff yeah. different. Oh, it's a different <laughs> Sorry. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's that shows on uh, different. It's not on Twitch, for one. Um, I'll send you the link no, for that oh. one later. Yeah. We, we I'm on it a lot. TOS and all sorts of other things. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, th I think the, the fact that they're just embracing this sort of not, not pigeonholing it into any sort of, you know, specific, specific race means you need to, you know, I think it also also just kind of what, what's the word I'm looking for sort of dissuades min maxing right like I'm not gonna play the orc barbarian because it is is the strongest way to play a barbarian or whatever the case is right absolutely so, absolutely yeah overall good change I believe big titty goth orc gf <laughs> Jeez. wait a minute <laughs> oh man all right well T type it into type it into google yeah. <laughs> it, 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 it's out there it exists oh yeah what's the rule i do it i forget the rule the rule is if you can think of it it's uh, there's definitely a porn version of it yeah um and if you, if there's not a porn version of it then you've got to make it then you, oh is I'm it, good. that's that's i'm good subtext. i do not want to i do not feel morally <laughs> obligated to do that's, any that's such a, thing i'm pretty sure that that's the addendum to the rule right have you, you brought up Gloob earlier, and Gloob is the uh, Grung that I'm playing in uh, Ghost of our Ghost of Saltmarsh campaign. And as much as all of these guys, or all of these books, and everything that uh, Wizards is coming out with now is getting away from calling a whole race evil, like all of 5e, as far as I know, is getting away from calling the entirety of a race evil. But when the Grung little pamphlet was released, it says most grung are ca are lawful evil like I, I just found it interesting that that snippet in there is like grung society is lawful evil it's like oh okay yeah well, well we're not completely so those, are, we were, those guys we are going frogs, in that direction so they're more akin to playable monsters than a race so it, they put that entire pamphlet is as a playable race <laughs> they're they're playable <laughs> monsters it's not the same. They're not. They're not as humanish looking. So um, we could get away with. I, calling I mean, them. I'm just saying that if we're gonna get away from calling things like a race, calling like like sentient beings monsters is probably worse. I would say. But if everybody's a monster, then I mean, 
Maybe they will. Maybe they'll stop saying what, what race will you play, but which monster will you play? Monster. I would like to play a whole a human. A human monster. A human monster, which is probably more apt in a lot of scenarios. We're pretty shitty, especially in D and D. Yeah. <laughs> God, yeah. Oh God. <laughs> But yeah, so move, like past the the ability score stuff that's kind of building upon Tasha's. Yeah, we get to the Dampier. Yeah. So Dampier lore, part vampire. I don't know if it necessarily says half. You're not you're not necessarily half, are you? You're just. I don't think so. I think it's just you've got it in there somewhere. Right. Yeah. Gr Grandpa Vladimir got got hooked on a mortal girl, right? Or something like that. I don't think it well, even specifies that you are have to be part vampire. Because it just says that they often arise from encounters with vampires. But all manner of macabre bargains, necromantic influences, encounters with mysterious immortals might have transformed your character. Right, here's my counter argument to that. Let's look at the word. Damn here. I'm just telling I'm just saying <laughs> what it says right here is apparently you don't even necessarily have to be a part vampire. It's you. You are been something necromantic. Yeah. It doesn't. It doesn't say uh, vampire yeah. at all. Yeah, it's like but, that might be why you're a dampier, but it doesn't have. I mean, traditionally, it was like if you, your mum was pregnant and then they got bitten by a vampire, then you'd be blade. Yep. In the film. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, but yeah, they're really. I I really like that they have the different hungers thing that you can choose from. It doesn't have to be. Okay, uh, so I'm blood. Gonna go over these. <laughs> yeah, some of them. Are, I just saw some them. Of them are pretty right? weird. <laughs> some of them are weird. What? Right. You you got first blood. two. Yeah. yeah. Normal. Tick. Normal. Flesh or raw meat. Weird, but normal as far as monstrous like lineages go. Right. Right. Yeah. It, then it gets weird. C cerebral spinal fluid. Very specific. <laughs> <laughs> very like, very specific guys but, be careful with their spine i need that like <laughs> wait but, but if you go excuse me I just could i just quickly get my syringe out just to remove some of your spinal fluids like what how do they do you then like when you kill someone do you rip out their spine and drink it like it's like some sort of like you've just cracked open a can of beer you get yeah, yeah, you're it. like funneling a beer through <laughs> <laughs> like, i don't what? know i don't Understand. I think East of, there's like, there's a there's an example of these though, right? There am I I'm think I'm probably thinking of a very specific episode of like Supernatural or Angel or some other fucking TV show like that. But I, if I'm not mistaking, there was a group of like vampiric type creatures that specifically preyed on people's like spinal fluid, and this is what they were going after. But oh yeah. no no, but specifically it's cerebral spinal fluid so that's right. kind of close to the brain right yeah it's got to be like from right there up near your neck it's just like, the vampire so, that likes it from the back i i was just try, trying to work out if it's kind of a slightly it's going a little bit zombie it's not quite the brain but oh, you're close yeah. maybe that's, that's that's a good point maybe because they they haven't got like brains kind of in the list right yeah, no, I think that's a good that's a good point. And yeah, the rest, I, some of these are just. Then we get to I esoteric humors. What is what is that? I think it's. I'm not puns. sure. I'm, I'm about to Google it. I think I think it's the the vampire who just loves a good pun and they they gain life force off of it. Yeah, in fairness, I would not allow that from any player in my game because, <laughs> like, I've I've heard some of the shit they come up with. <laughs> Like, I don't get... That's such a weird thing. The others all make... I, I will... I, there, are, there are two in here that I think make the least amount of sense. And this is one of them. <laughs> that's why... Esoteric... Have you Googled it yet? I did, and I'm not really getting anything good. Chat, what, what's a, what's a esoteric humor? Let's let's hear it. Someone someone give me an example of esoteric humor. Say, not, he, hey Siri, what is esoteric humor? So we we've already gotten somebody who said the other one that makes zero fucking sense. The color of one's appearance, like ha ha ha, I'm going to drink your colors, like yeah. Huh. Well, we'll get guys, it's, I, I found it a page on Yahoo Answers. Um, oh, 
Uh, esoteric okay. humour. Oh no. Uh, it's gone to what's something some smart people put in a sandwich. Uh, I almost had it. But I think it's like a dark sense of humour. Oh. It's like okay. a small, somebody, I don't really tell specific sense of humour that only you get. Somebody tells a joke about like Auschwitz and you're like, ah, I'm full Ooh. now. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, the prob probably oh. not the best for a streamed game. May maybe yeah. best told in yeah. your dark, dank basement somewhere. Yeah. So, uh, Psychic Energy, which... Yeah. They, there are those in Dresden Falls, yeah. right? Dresden Falls, yeah. They, yeah, like, they have those. They, yeah, the, 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 the kind the, of sex, the sexy ones. Yeah, the, the white... Yeah, the white... Well, there's like a... They, feed, then, they feed off your life force by fucking you. It's weird. Yeah, but then there's so, also... Like, we're like, going to do the nasty and... <laughs> There's also diff the, the different branches of the family where there's like the fear ones, yeah, where they make them scared, true. they get it, and then I think it's like the pain, um, despair. I think is one of them oh, as well. Oh yeah, yeah. There's like fear, despair, all kinds, like yeah, any extreme up. emotion you feel. Yeah, on. that's yeah. It's just it's a different one of those extremes. So yeah, that's the those but are very good examples. Oh, here we go. Energy. Esoteric humor is basically a private joke. <laughs> what? Makes that's sense. stupid. That is the worst thing to have your hunger be. That's ridiculous. Like, I don't get it. But can you only speak with people who, who know the joke? Or maybe like, oh yeah, she's got five eyes. Sorry, you had, well, you had to be there, but if I explain it now, then I could feed off you. I feel like you would die very quickly if that was your hunger. <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. <laughs> I do. I used to just stand-up comedy on um like just around london and brighton uh, where i live in england and i think a, a fair few um comedians from that circuit were esoteric humor dampires <laughs> that makes yeah. sense it that's... all makes sense now yeah i hope they're not watching that, that's what they're i mean that's what they're doing right they, they go out there they completely bomb and they get full for the night that's their dinner oh, they totally yeah okay there's your character concept, chat. Oh, psychic energy as well. Isn't that, that is that like the guy on What We Do in the Shadows? Have you seen the TV series of that? No, I haven't. Well, you're missing out. It's hilarious. Uh, but there's basically a, a guy in there who is just so boring that he bores people to death. Um, and so he just works in an office and is just really either really annoying or really boring and feeds off the psychic energy that they give off. Check it out, it's really fun. Yeah, for sure. Sorry, oh, Mike, put it on your list. Is screaming at me right now. What? Leave me alone. All right. Uh, a color from one's appearance. All right, I'm not going to lie. The first time I saw this one, I gave it a real big, what do you yeah, mean, like, mean exactly? Me? Like That's basically a, a one step forward, two steps back kind of thing, right. isn't it? It's like, it's like the, aha, the entire the racism vampire is like, this is us trying to delete racism out of our game and move forward and all this. And then I read, you can drain a color from one's appearance. And I'm like, huh. But then after some thinking about what it probably actually means, not actually drinking the color from, from someone, maybe like drinking. I think uh, Brittany actually said in chat, the color one was from a cartoon. Uh, apparently yeah. in Adventure Time, there was a vampire who drank the color red. So that is a, that is a thing, yeah. I'm just like, what's the what's the detrimental factor for that? It's like, oh man, hold on, guys, I have the best way for you to eat. Have you heard of dye? And you just dye like giant rolls of cloth. <laughs> like that's it. That's, You're done. But but that's that's kind of like the vampires who go to the blood bank, really, isn't it? I guess. But it's like, I don't get it. It's like, even even if you do just walk up to random people and, like, drink the color of their clothes, it doesn't hurt anybody. You are, like, the yeah. least threatening creature so ever. Like, if, I, if I went to Jonesy and, like, sucked the purple out of his T-shirt, uh, yeah. like, would that, he just then wouldn't have a purple. His, all his clothes would be gray instead of purple. That's essentially, that's it, right? That's, yeah. that's what I'm getting from it. That's what I'm, I just, it's so weird. See, Yodox, I... I I don't think that I don't think I would allow that in my game <laughs> just just as a way of uh, yeah definitely the, not no, yeah no no, no, no not the pigment of skin right no right None that, that that goes against everything that wizards have been trying to do recently it's like wait a second well, also, you want to be the racism character <laughs> yeah it goes against everything that I would want in my game 
However, it also just make your life as a DM, like, it's just be so fucking annoying. It's like, all right, guys, you meet this NPC and hey, what color is the shirt? Like what, you you make a chart? <laughs> is that what you got to have now because of your your color hungry damp here? A chart that says yes, colors I on it, you just roll on it? Yeah, I just starved to death. I'd be like, this oh, color does not exist anymore. You, you go, okay, there's three buttons and they're all different shades of red. Aha, drain them. Okay, it says pick the, the salmon color. Oh, no. Um, and that really fuck them over then. Right. Oh no, I'm just sorry to just said, them. Yeah, it's like when you tell me you're the color at character creation, I want specific. I don't just want red. Like yes. what 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 shade of red? I'm also thinking That would make it harder. <laughs> I'm thinking about the colorblind dampier that feeds off of color. Might be an interesting <laughs> concept. Might There's be. like I'm gonna eat this. Oh, never mind. Uh, excuse me. What what color is is this over here? Would you say it's uh it's it's like a lime green? Oh, <laughs> delicious! <laughs> Wonderful. Let me. Mm. Mm, 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 mm. How does that work exactly? How do you feed off of a color? Do you just like? I don't know what you do. Well, do you well, get a straw? Is, colors just like wavelengths of light, right? So just look at it. Yeah, mm -hmm. you just gotta be like have it. Reflect wait, wait, you. are you basically a plant? That's, that's photosynthesis. Way, yeah, yeah, it's like color. Well, I was just like a plant. <laughs> then you have dreams <laughs> to move on from that one. That makes way more sense. You'd be like, oh yes, yeah. it's it's similar to like the psychic energy. You go up to it's sleeping there. people and be like, Wah. it's Freddy and... Krueger, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, one hundred percent. That's exactly what it is. But wait, did he feed off of it? Did he get stronger from it? I think he was he just, just a use... dick. I think he was just a dick. But uh, if I was running it, I would definitely. If you're feeding off someone's dreams, it would warp them and turn them into nightmares and leave them mentally disturbed. Because I think that's then there's a cost that you that. You are predicting upon the person, which is kind of the point of the campaign. They're trying to not give in to their hunger, right? Right. It's because they're supposed to be like, a, there's, it's a risk in some form or another. Like, it is damaging to somebody. Otherwise, it's kind of, that, that's why I hate the color thing. Is it's like, who's this harming? <laughs> well, <laughs> he okay, hurt so anybody. imagine if you were a color ampere and you were in Fashion Week in, in Milan. Like, there'd be a lot of very angry rich people there. Trying to hunt you down. Fuck them. <laughs> That's nothing but a win. It's been my book. Like, fuck them. I mean, you know, there's two sides to every argument, isn't there, Ian? Nah, fuck rich people. <laughs> Eat them. Here, Ian. <laughs> All right. <laughs> We're getting political. I mean, the only way I, c I could see that uh, a color could be damaging to somebody is if, like, a, 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 a troop were getting ready to, like, charge into battle. And before they the they did, this Dampier went in and like sucked the color from their flag. So they marched in waving a white flag and they're like, oh, they're surrendering. And then, oh no, they're not surrendering. <laughs> but- That would just be very confusing. Uniforms. That would be, it'd, it'd be convenient as well. <laughs> Big brain. Yes. <laughs> it'd also make people think that whoever's army that is, is committing <laughs> loads of war crimes. <laughs> like, wait a minute. Krosum What's going says, on here? Krosum says, well, when you when you have a daughter that wants to move to Neverwinter to start her music career, you'll wish there was a damn period around to suck that dream right out of her head. <laughs> 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 oh, <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, the, these dream damn periods probably get a, a lot, are probably very sated around like LA and Hollywood. <laughs> oh, oh <man>. God. <laughs> that is a Geneva convention. No, no. See? Nashville, too. There's probably a lot of dream I... damn periods there. Okay, so here's here's my question in regards to the last one on these damp damper hungers, life energy and psychic energy. How do they how do they differ? What's the difference between them? I feel like I feel like if you like drain someone of their psychic energy, that it, like you tend to like leave them a vegetable. If you like, you completely drain them of all their psychic energy. Like they just, they don't got any juice left in the whole think tank, so they just like collapse. Yeah. The way I would phrase it in D and D terms is probably intelligence damage versus constitution damage. That's yeah, yeah, that makes I'd, sense. That'd be the way I think of it. Because yeah, because like you, if you, because that that'd be the detriment is you're just you're slowly just sucking out like their ability to like form thought. So, so they're eventually just gonna 
sit well, around. Um, so, it, so which one would be the sex vampire? Like the, the succubus or the incubus? That would be life energy, wouldn't it? I think so. Yeah, I think I think they like split like the concept of the white court into like the suck. The incubus would be you know the sex vampire. They're they're sucking out your life force, whereas the psychic energy would be like that despair, the the specific emotion. Yeah. yeah. I don't well, know. I, I would almost no. say like the if you were like the the, the sex vampire for going off the the Dresden Files, that would be psychic energy. I, I think. Well, it's, it's also because the, it's like. It, they all three of them drain the life force, but they need a specific mindset. Like they need, there needs to be a specific emotion that is overriding. Like, right. so for the sex ones, it's lust, fear, despair, like that kind of thing. So that, so they're all life energy, but then they need the psychic to I line if, up with that. If, if if you go off the Dresden Files, then yeah, I think that they're all psychic vampires. There's, I think, a succubus in terms of D and D terms. They very much, I think, drain the life out of you right. more than that. But they just use the kind of the sex thing to lure you in like a Venus flytrap. Right. Well, when I think of life, life energy draining, I'm, I'm thinking almost like Dementor from Harry Potter, right? Oh, um, yeah. Like, like a school type, negative level type thing. Yeah. Prozons, what are you doing in chat, man? Hop, you you want to hop in here? <laughs> I get yeah, black core vampires. I think that would fall into the yeah would fall into the the realm of being like sucking out life energy. I knew what you meant, Kent. Like, I I, I they're, they're, they're they're blood. They're blood. They do blood. That that's they're what the black core. I, th I, yeah, I think that's I think that's more. I guess that's black, more the thing. Black core is. It's Dracula is basically Bram Stoker wrote the, the how to guide and how to deal with black court vampires. Yeah, that's true. They did say that. I, I, my Dresden Files knowledge is on point. <laughs> yeah, all the I, they, I have not read them myself. All these guys have, have read them a good bit. What's what's the other one? They're like the Jade Court. We know nothing about the Jade Court. We know I they know, exist. But super interested. Oh yeah, I like the, the others. All fall into their nice little niche. Yeah, life energy is a good one. It kind of, it's just like you don't necessarily have to drink their blood. Like I, I would imagine that that like Jones being, it's like it's more along the lines like you're sucking out their soul. Yeah, and, yeah, definitely. Right, it's and the it, dementus, dementus kiss. Yeah, yeah, in D and D terms, like gaining levels of exhaustion or con score effects. Like that, that's the way I would look at it. Right. Definitely. Yeah. I think that makes sense. Dampier origins. Are you just gonna uh this just turned into a Dresden stream? No, we're moving on. Dampier origin. It's because so we... it's so easy. There's so <laughs> many like dr vampires in, in Dresden. Yeah, uh Prosum, hop into the uh the Skype call. You should see it's going going. It's the tavern talk with guests uh Skype call. And I'll I'll just transition he, scenes as soon he, as you do. We have three of three in call. He's not in this one. Oh uh, really? Can... Uh can you send him an invite real quick? We'll, we'll I can. While you do that, we'll talk about some Dampier origins and just kind of go down the line there. The first origin being you are the reincarnation of an ancestor who was a vampiric tyrant. You're, you're Dracula's kid, right? That's the cut yeah. and dry. Well, no, no. Uh, you're, you're a reincarnation of, of oh, an so ancestor. You, you are Dracula. <laughs> you're you're uh, glad no, you're, you're, you're a reincarnation of uh, vampires, uh, of, of Vlad the Impaler's Right. Like kid, right. I think. Made that it, That's like saying it's my third cousin twice removed. That's like the reincarnation of an ancestor of a vampire tyrant. Right. That makes sense. Someone uh, someone talk real quick while I work on <laughs> That's not talking. <laughs> What's up? That's not <laughs> talking at all. I mean, well, I'll just go ahead and start talking about number two because like that first one's pretty like self-explanatory but the number two is you know you, you're packed with a predatory deity fiend fae or spirit causes you to share their hunger that's very warlocky isn't it well yeah it's kind of warlocky but it's 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 like it's like warlock light right it's like rather than giving you yeah. magical magic powers like the ability to cast magic it's like okay i'm gonna like edit your physiology in order to give you some ab no, abilities it it would be a, a good, like, I mean, you can see that working with the Warlock class really well, right. but all, I mean, oh, yeah. with any of the other ones. Oh. 
it's like I like that specifically the predator part because it's like that's that's the point of the damn pierce like you're you're a yeah. hunter of some kind so it's like if you have like some god of like or, or like a, a some like monster or fiend or fae that like their thing is that they hunt shit like they're and they're massively good and powerful at it like if hunters pray to them at all or they're like they're seen as a hunter in their in whatever uh, like mythos surrounds them. It's like that they could grant that kind of thing. It's like that'd be fucking. It's like okay, that's sick. Totally, it's the the, the pact part of that that I find really interesting. Right. Yeah. Because it does it does specifically say a pact with a predatory. Thing. Yeah. So it is. It definitely. It's it's brushing shoulders pretty close with warlock as a class. Yeah. No, no, they, uh, they kind of just want to give people that kind of flavor that they can throw into a background in a mm-hmm. more concrete way right i mean absolutely like, sort of like bay touch type kind of human would be with people's emotions and hey kit you're super quiet yeah that's what i was about to say oh shit uh is this any better yeah it's a little bit better oh. <laughs> you got the big quiet yeah kent is very quiet as someone is saying in chat um I'm gonna go ahead and add our windows to check and see what we're talking about as well. Uh, yeah, that's, I mean, that's, that's Warlock, colors. right? Like that's, that's made for your Warlock class is what that looks like to me. Cause that looks like those I, are almost inseparable. Well, I mean, you can make it as a, as, or, or like, as, like I said, as Warlock light. Like if you want to kind of like had something where you made a deal, but you don't want to be a Warlock. Like you, you'd made a deal to like, Hey, I need like the physical power. I need fi- you like you need physical strength or something because right. that's the kind of thing that it gives you whereas being like not yeah, magical you... abilities they like enhance your body yeah you could you could definitely find other little things to do like like with the other races and classes and stuff as well for sure right like if you wanted to be like other classes like a kind of anti-paladin that had fiendish type kind of ties or something like that and you bet on people's life force and stuff like that there you go Without being like, hee hee, I'm gonna take one level dip into Hexblade. Like, you bitch. Right. <laughs> Bastard. Uh, as someone said in the chat, number three is is Blade. It's, that's the Blade origin. But yeah. You yeah. survived being attacked, but you were forever changed. Yeah. Actually. Was there a different. No, that, that's it. Yeah, that's the one right there. I was about to say, I thought there was one that made me think more Blade than that, but I think that's the one. So, yeah. yeah, that's your blade. That's that's cut and dry. I dry, I think. Number four, yeah. number four is interesting to me. It's yeah, that that right there. You want to talk about what's Dresden Files right there? Number four is White mm. Court to a T. That is yes. exactly how the White Court is explained as working. Is that they have like an inner like demon parasite that like that's that's where they get their physical abilities and everything from. But it also it it's what drives their hunger totally it does it's called the hunger with a capital yeah. h isn't it yep um but yeah no i i really like that as a concept if you've got, you got this parasite which makes you strong but it demands sacrifice as well yeah it makes you makes you lash out at people if you're not if you're not careful james you need to find the the damp here that's feeding on your internet connection <laughs> all right <laughs> <laughs> I, I live in a house of like six people and they all watch a lot of pornography so. oh they're so they're all damn peers <laughs> the- somebody's just over there just biting his ethernet cable like mm, give me that bandwidth boy oh, <laughs> oh they're, they're not biting it oh, <laughs> oh god oh, no. all right oh, all right no. moving on number five you lo- <laughs> you loved an immortal and were willing to be transformed <laughs> into a vampire to join them but tragedy interrupted the transformation that is oh that is queen of the dam oh, to wait. me that's a that's a that's a full word I, I didn't use that special word we can't use anymore it's cool that's, that's all like that that's like when you're in the middle of like you know having sex with someone and then something terrible happens like it's just nothing worse you ever be you ever be shrimping for that <laughs> that immortal? I was, I, <laughs> I was in love with an immortal, and we were 
about to consummate it, and then his mum walked in, and then oh. I had to jump out the window. Oh, God! <laughs> that is and a tragedy. And now I'm a dampier. It'd be like that sometimes. <laughs> like, that's crazy. Oh, man. I think I think of the movie Queen of the Damned. I can't even remember who's in that movie, but that's what it makes me think of for some reason. Uh, number six, you are a diminished man manifestation of an otherworldly being. It's like your hunger hastens your renewal. That was so vague. That's so like I don't, yeah, I don't get it. I mean, you could even kind of blanket that into like, yeah, like I'm a partial mummy or something if you really wanted to like you could get really way out there with that type kind of stuff uh can i just clarify uh what does slaking mean like feeding <laughs> or like I'm... uh diminishing like if you want to slake your thirst you're taking a drink so you're really thirsty so you had a little, a little slake. Yeah, I am thirsty. there you go <laughs> so you're slaking your thirst right now it's a weird like... word you really don't see it used all that much because it doesn't make sense. But number six kind of um, makes it sound like, oh, I'm an otherworldly being, and if I, the more I feed, the, the kind of easy it's going to be for me to become that being again. I kind of think it, that goes against the whole point of the Dampo, is that you're trying to not feed because you want to prevent the transformation, or you want to prevent them getting a hold of you. So that kind of, it kind of approached it from the completely opposite direction, right? You know, I've I've never thought of it that way. I, I I think I've been looking at all of these like you've just kind of submitted to these hungers, right? Or or at least or at yeah. least you're very very well aware of them. Not that you were completely trying to ignore them, because I feel like I don't know. I I think I was looking at at them as necessities, right? Is that is that not the case for the so hungers? I think, I think you have to. I think it's just like you can either overindulge or do the bare minimum, right? Well, it says like, those who resist might find exceptional ways of controlling their urges or suppress it through constant molar grinding restraint. In any case, temptation haunts them fears and circumstances conspire to give them endless reasons to indulge. So, I mean, I the way I always kind of interpreted that and also, kind of the way that I would do it if I was the character is that the, that temptation and trying to stop it—that's what makes the Dampai really in, an interesting character. Um, and that's what makes a lot of that's what makes in the Dresden Files, for example, the character of Thomas is really interesting because he's constantly trying to stop the hunger because he doesn't want to hurt anyone. But sometimes he needs to indulge in that to make him stronger to help Dresden. Are we talking about Blade again? No, that, that was Dresden File, sorry. <laughs> that, that was, that was, but, but also Blade. But also Blade, right? Like... Also Blade. It's, it's, a, it's a common theme, really. Like, when you have characters in fantasy that are in those kind of situations where it's like, oh, they can get more powerful if they cause harm to others, so they try not to do it, but then when sometimes when push comes to shove, they gotta, they gotta do it at least a little bit in order to overcome the obstacle. Yeah. It's, the, it's all about... Uh, interesting when you're paying a price to nope uh oh Whoop. we lost uh oh he's do, gone do, do. I mean what I'm... he was about to say was oh, oh. oh, oh is he back there there he is <laughs> I was I was about to say what what he was about to say was profound and we, we'll oh, never know it did you not hear my the profound thing I said no I don't think Chad okay, did uh, you want to circle uh, back around to uh, it? No, it's fine. I, I, it, it really was in the moment. I can't really remember how profound it, <laughs> it was. It's fair. Uh, it was great. Yeah. That, is, that is true. You can't be evil. Tokyo Ghoul is, is a superb example of like, you don't necessarily, you can be one of those people that are like, eh, I'll just, I don't give a shit. I'm going to do it anyway. <laughs> like, all right, word, I'm going to indulge. And, Imagine if you were like one one of the evil vampires and you were like trying to get get this to slake your thirst uh, or your hunger, and it, but you had to do the spinal column one, and you're like, oh, for God's sake! Are you, I'd be over there like the predator, just fucking rip them out all at once. <laughs> the big slurp. You're just it, sitting down there. Oh, that one does seem like the most tiring one. Like, 
so, so much work goes behind it, right? Like all the preparation. That's, that's the barbarian damp here. That's the one that just rips their head off from their body and just. Right, but that's still delicious. so much work. Imagine like after you get home from this adventure and you're sitting on on your you know adventurer's couch and then you get hungry and now you gotta either go bite someone cleanly in the spinal cord or rip their head off and beer funnel their yeah. <laughs> their cerebral hey, fluids it almost, it's, it's, it almost it's seems like oh, after you kept <laughs> it almost seems like a goofy reference to that one south park episode where these like get the stem cells out of the little babies like it just seems completely drastic or yeah he's taking like i don't know if you guys seem like you have no idea what i'm talking about nope i don't please, please continue I'm, I'm really interested <laughs> uh christopher reeves is able to walk again <laughs> by eating stem cells sucking the stem cells out of baby fetuses so he's just like going around like snapping them open like slim, slim jims and eating their spinal fluid so that he can continue to walk in the episode jesus yeah that does sound like an episode of south park yep Really and so does. to me it i mean it sounds almost silly like that's above and beyond what would be normal or i mean can you use normal animals can you just like okay well i guess let's go to the pet shop you know let's just get this oh over. god <laughs> i would hate you so much oh it's, it's like, all fine doing it for fetuses until we talk about puppies exactly <laughs> dogs are better than people it, 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 it reminds me of you know Dexter. You ever watch that yeah. that program? Like, I get he's got this hunger to kill people, but like, it just seems like a lot of work. Yeah. Like, he's got to put like <laughs> the wrap on everything. He's got to cut them up, and I was like, like, just that. Oh, I, I hate that. It'd be a nightmare. I, <laughs> I, I get you get no sleep. Can you? But can you imagine Dexter? I mean, can you imagine that. Dexter though if he just used a gun? Like, how boring of a show would that be? <laughs> <laughs> if Dexter just walked up to someone and was like, well, bam, that, like, show's over, yeah. right? <laughs> it, it, that, that would be boring, but seeing what he actually does makes me physically tired. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right, all right, let's, let's move work. on. Uh, number seven, you don't know your origins, but you were raised by vampires or other monsters. I love this. Is this... Just, it reminds me of, like, a, a kid's TV show. Right, like, right. Like, Hotel Sega is, like, for the Adams Family. Yeah, yeah, that's like, exactly like what I was thinking. You're, like, this one random-ass normal kid growing up in this building with, like, the big bad wolf Frankenstein and Dracula, and they're just like... But yeah, what I like with that is, like, you, you're raised by vampires, so you're not a vampire, but you still have a thirst for the blood, which makes it seem like it's just a psychological thing. <laughs> <laughs> You're just biting people with normal ass teeth, like, dear Jesus Christ! Ah! I've got to, I don't know, I can't, I, I don't know my origins! <laughs> but also, that implies that the vampire's gonna, ah, we have found this baby! Let us raise him as one of our own! Like, I love that, it's really cute! <laughs> Their love just transforms you over time. It's just an it's odd, like, love. magical force. Yeah, 100%. You don't raise yeah, something so, you don't love, man. <laughs> I don't child know I, soldier. Child to me, soldier. To me, I, I kind of see like it's one of those things to where, it's, you know, you have some sort of situation to where you go to the live market and you're like, all right, time to get supper. Time to get supper. Well, that was really cute. I'll just keep it. <laughs> and we'll you're, keep you're, it. Like, you're like a pet to them. They're like, oh, do you want to meet year. Rufus, our human? So <laughs> now, I, so now I have a pet rooster. <laughs> It's one of those. I've got a it's, pig, a duck, a cat. I can't eat. I've not had Christmas dinner in years. <laughs> it's like cracking open those fetuses you were talking about, Ken. They went to crack open this one, but it's a little, a little too cute. So they're just gonna raise it now. <laughs> yep. And then number eight, you have Vampire Hulk. <laughs> a radical experiment changed your body, making you reliant on others for vital fluids. Yeah. Gross. <laughs> Kind of they did a dry. real nice mix of like kind of quite dark stuff with the kind of quite <laughs> kind of stuff, haven't they? Yeah. Yeah. There's like here's here here's goofy as shit. <laughs> I don't particularly like the phrase vital fluids. Not no, that's not a huge <laughs> fan. <laughs> my what? <laughs> Throwing that out there. <laughs> you want to drink my what now? I'm just saying, no, knowing some of the authors from this, like I can tell kind of which ones Jeremy Crawford wrote. 
or have, have well, I'll say I'll, I have a hunch, right? I have a hunch. I know of which one's Jeremy, Jeremy Crawford. Jeremy Crawford wrote. is like, yeah, them vital fluids, man. Not where, not what I, I was saying. More the cutesy you were raised by vampires or monsters was. That's where I was going, but I maybe really completely wrong. Meeting, like when they were sat around, he's like, "I want the vital fluids one." Well, you can have it, but only if we put the cute one in. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> They're sitting there bargaining. <laughs> I want to see the the pile that didn't make it in. That's what I want to see. Yeah, the very middle of the road, I imagine. You think so? You don't think there's yeah. just some super extreme one? Like, you, oh, yeah, you, maybe. you subsist I'm off of butthole old. juices. Nah, we can't put butthole juices in there. <laughs> what? what about if you're like... Speed on a, duck butter. <laughs> what about if you're like a, a, a baby, like, werewolf? How about that? How cute would that be? No, it's not dark enough. <laughs> right. More vital fluids. More you vital are, fluids. You are the dark tooth fairy. You have to eat their teeth. Oh, God. I'm sorry, but what is the Tooth Fairy doing with those teeth? Eating Sucking them. the marrow like, out of it, Like obviously. popcorn. She's <laughs> got to have your teeth to get her filling. <laughs> it's something... like this cerebral spinal fluid fairy. <laughs> oh, God. There's something very dark about eating teeth. But... <laughs> I'm telling uh -huh. you, man. That's, I'm, that has to be... I want that custom. I'm like, if I play a damn fair, I would like to... My hunger? Teeth. Oh, oh God. I eat <laughs> teeth. <laughs> Jonesy, I noticed some of your spinal fluid have come out come out there. Well, pop it under your pillow, because in the night, the fairy will come. And she'll leave your house. Or dollar. All right, let's hop into Holy some of these shit, traits. we're a whole dollar. Let's go. For it's spinal fluids, e never mind. I'm not going to talk to you about he how bad of a deal that is. You didn't specify how much. So, Dampier What's traits. The, the, type, the type here is super interesting to me humanoid and undead they classify you as undead which in dnd terms that means special things for you that means you're affected by things like detect undead and like smite, smite and like Extra. turn undead or possibly destroy undead right that's horrifying you just get fucking yeah. dusted because somebody used to destroy undead yeah. Oh, oh, oh fuck. No, yo, imagine being the DM who forgets that their their Dampier player is technically undead, and then they have like a high level cleric show up to save the party and they cast destroy undead and their Dampier goes, um you know I'm undead, right? And they just fucking die. <laughs> like, right. Oh, oh no Yeah, we're like uh we're like DM Chronicles is saying in chat right now, the bone knight that we did in his one shot, right? Oh, that now controls a PC. No, no DM shenanigans involved. That's just your fucking race, man. <laughs> That's I mean, so fucked. I, I'm still like, quite angry about that, that entire adventure. <laughs> Are you? I, hey, I was so tempted just like, I'm just going to kill everybody. I'm letting it happen. We're doing it. Oh, man. I'm a, I'm a better person than that. I, I restrain Are you? Yes, I did. I sat there and rolled con saves to not murder my party members. Oh, like yeah, that, that's Half right. an hour. You, you were lovely. Uh, certain other members of the party did not uh, try to resist that urge to kill other party members. Once. <laughs> One turn to make things interesting. I just got to sit there and tell Brevin to go fuck himself, though, so it, I was pretty satisfied. <laughs> it, yeah, but it, it did go down to it being just me not being controlled by the other, by the big bad guy. It's 100% <laughs> right. Point going, oh, God! <laughs> oh, jeez. All right. Okay. They also are medium or small. Choose when you gain the lineage. And they I have a speed... That depends on what the original uh, yeah, race like is. Original right, race right, right, right. Like, if you're, if you're halfling or, or whatever the case yeah. is, so... And I then really like that. speed 35 feet, which is, I mean, there's not a lot of, I mean, what's the other race? I think Tabaxi, right? Is that the only uh, other race? Tabaxi wood don't elf. get, don't get base extra. Yeah, no, it's, it's Wood Elf. They get 35 uh, feet. There you go. Yeah. Here, here's the thing about, about that though. Is there any particular reason why you would ever want to be small in D&D? &D? Aside from the fact that you'll look hilarious being a small creature that has a 35 foot movement speed. Now, as a base yeah. small creature in D&D, you take this advantage when you're using, essentially, two-handed weapons. And on top of that, 
you can move through a person's square if they're two sizes larger than you. One size larger if you're a halfling. But it's kind of oh. like, that seems like such a penalty just for this one really niche thing for you to be able to manipulate large creatures. I've never ever played a small creature. Never. In never, never. I don't know why. Maybe I'm a heightist. I don't like midgets. <laughs> I'm 6'2 in real life, been there, done that. Ken, I'm 6'2 six, <laughs> in real life. Also, maybe that's the reason why we don't play small characters. No, I'm playing a halfling right now. He is now. playing a halfling. <laughs> why, Ken? Why are you doing this? <laughs> He's like, man, I want to see what it's like from the other side. <laughs> like, exactly. What, what I like is that Ken has literally just listed off all the things he hates about his current character. Oh, yeah, for yeah. sure. <laughs> hey, man. I, I don't think Bart is going to be trying to use any great swords, thankfully. I don't think that's part of the point. Is Generally speaking, if you're going to play a small character, it, those it's not going to be a problem for you anyway because you're probably it's not what you're going for, right? Yeah. So I think you'll generally be playing things that it just is just not going to be an issue. So you're just like, yeah, well, I want to be the gnome like caster or whatever. So not really much of a problem that I can't go around swinging around a great sword, you know? So that was my question to set up. Why not a large creature, though? What large races are there, Kent? Any, any large race that you could want, honestly. Which Furbolgs one? Furbolgs are medium. Like, nope. Furbolgs non, are medium. They just have powerful build. Non gimp right. centaurs and minotaurs, or like weird half giant things. You could be a half giant that could literally have to grind people's bones, make it in the bread, and then feed off of it. I mean, Goliaths are technically part giant, and they they can get up to like nine feet tall. Still medium creatures. Sit playable sure. centaurs and minotaurs are also medium. That's what I said. Nine player nerf centaurs right. and minotaurs. Right, right, right. I mean, it's just from a balance perspective, right? Large will yeah, give you sure. so no, many, no, so many, understand. so many advantages. <laughs> It's this uh, says as, all you had to do is ask. I could have told you what it was like to go through life as a halfling. <laughs> as, as, as Kent and I know, uh, being tall is great. Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. Dark vision. Whatever. Hell yeah. Been there, done Standard. that. Normal. It's a good thing to have, but you know, it, I think it's just. I think it's overused. To be honest, it's just throw dark vision at it makes the, well, it's makes the race better. Well, you don't have a, a gradient, like you don't have low light vision. Low light vision doesn't exist in 5e. You don't have, like, you don't, there, nobody gets like true sight. <laughs> nobody gets like thermal sight or anything. It's That's the only sight option you have. Yeah. Is dark vision. Uh, there's devil sight. Yeah, that's Not a fucking that's, invocation. Yeah. It doesn't count. <laughs> <laughs> God damn it. And then probably the coolest thing about this entire thing as far as their traits go, Spider Climb, which just allows you to move your walking speed up and down walls, ceilings, whatever. Just at third level. You can't you don't get to do the ceilings thing until third level. After your level three, you can just stand on the roof. You're just like That's the, while you're you leaving your hands gravity. free. Yeah, you just li you just say, I don't give a shit about gravity. You literally walk at it like a fucking cartoon character and then just start doing this. Like <laughs> It's like Superman in the Adventures of Lois and Clark. Yeah, you're just, you're just vibing, standing on the wall like everybody else is climbing up, like rock climbing. You're just standing there, like straight out vertical from the wall, like sup losers, <laughs> like you fucking what's up? <laughs> yeah, having a smoke on your pipe, like damn, that's crazy. That looks way hard. Take having a snack. <laughs> I I think spider climb is cool. I think it would have been more interesting if they had like four or five special things that you get for being a damn peer. I feel like that one's cool, but maybe they could have done better. I mean, it seems like vampires, like, as a concept, have a bunch of really interesting things that they could do, and that's just kind of like, oh, that's that's the one? I can walk on walls? I feel like Not like some sort of, like, song. look... Yeah, exactly. That's what I was about to say, like, look into somebody's eyes and charm them, like, you have access to the friend's cantrip or something like that, and then once you reach a certain level, maybe a higher version of, like, a charm ability, or, you know, some sort of, like, blood pool type kind of thing to where you can give yourself a buff for this stat for a certain amount of time. I mean, I guess you can kind of do that when you bite people, but... It, it does feel like this shit... I, like, to make the damn player interesting from my point of view, like, if they had a reward for giving in to your hunger... You could do something really cool, but at the same time, there's also like a negative, like attached yeah. to it. Like, um, 
like the more you do it, the more monstrous you become, and then you lose control of your character after a certain point. Right. Or well, like, like you have to roll to resist doing it in the future when it might be inconvenient for you. Right. I think it. I think it, uh, Dampier, as it stands, is one of the most like fluff involved roleplay heavy classes that they've introduced in the fifth edition with all the crazy options you could throw in there. But like I was saying in chat, I don't. I don't know if you guys saw how many. How many times have you run a campaign to where you've tracked the amount of rations that people use? <laughs> I mean, is yeah, it honestly that big so of a bad. deal? <laughs> like, Cody you, tries. <laughs> but I mean. It's not really that big of a deal, right? You're just like, well, you're gonna go off an adventure, like, nah, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go eat some squirrels, guys. Uh, I'll, I'll take an hour before resting. <laughs> Good, I got blood now. I've got fluids, vital fluids, <laughs> vital <laughs> fluids. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you, I want to see. All right. But, but yeah, I, I just kind of feel like there should be more than simply spider climb. Well. There is a little bit more than just spider climb. Sure. And that's their vampiric bite, which is a hot topic because of Oh god fucking damn it. <laughs> really how they how they classify it. And it's well, really shitty wording. Simple teeth. <laughs> Simple teeth. What what, what about Simple the color thing? <laughs> nah dog. Yo, I'm just saying you're so okay, dude the biggest overall problem with this bite is this first full sentence your fang bite is a natural weapon okay that makes sense you're biting them you got pointy teeth but then you get to which counts as a simple melee weapon with which you are proficient that's stupid it is dumb i don't care who you are well don't just say it say why <laughs> okay because you have shit specifically worded that it has to be a weapon so you can technically because it is classified as a simple melee weapon you can smite with this bite attack you could be a paladin and go, holy chomp, and you just bite them and just radiate damage. Bow. Why? I think that's cool. <laughs> Fuck it. Technically speaking, that also means you can use shit like booming blade and uh, green flame blade on it. I, I want to make this character now. I think you mean booming teeth and green flame teeth. I don't give a shit. <laughs> that doesn't say anything about it having to be a, a blade either. The names of those spells are stupid. <laughs> it's like, oh, uh, yes, I could technically use booming blade with this fucking shovel. Bomb. Yeah. <laughs> if, if you're listening, Wizards of the Coast. Well, if you, if you want to get that technical, Ian, technically, if you have Brawler, you can have, you know, booming coffee mug and booming ladder. Yes, exactly. That's my point. <laughs> Dumb. But bo booming weapon isn't alliterative. <laughs> Make it have to be a bladed weapon, then fuck them. <laughs> be like, nah, this has got to be a, a, a blade of some kind. But so, and then we get to my second problem with this this ability. Is so it the second th sentence? No, it's not actually. <laughs> the, I mean, that that I have other thoughts on that. That's that's irrelevant. <laughs> But the first benefit you can choose, which is to regain hit points equal to the damage dealt by the bite. Now, this is super, super rules lawyering, but you can technically 100% based on the wording of, of that part of the ability. If you smite as part of this bite, if you booming blade as part of this bite, if you are running any kind of buff that increases the damage you do like hex or hunter's mark. 100% rules is written the heal increases by that damage dealt which if you're a DM that's not an idiot or doesn't want to have ha just be super frustrated all whoa the time, there guy with the divisive <laughs> language <laughs> I am going to use some divisive language <laughs> fine unless unless you're just wanting to be super like you just want to let your players just do wild stupid shit I feel like it'd get really frustrating really fast like you're but, saying, that doesn't make listen. logical sense, so yeah. you're not gonna get the heal off of that smite damage you just did. <laughs> you can only use a proficiency modifier a Thank day. You. Like, oh, whoa say. there, Billy! You care. can't get 15 hit points back. You got spider climb. I don't <laughs> like, care. Get the no. fuck out of here. Dumb. <laughs> in being, in being Ian's able, defense you here, it. you could technically have spirit shroud running or something that's a hefty buff, and then smite on top of it. Or something, yeah, or booming blade on top of it, and be like, "Look at that! You just you just healed for like thirty fucking HP off of yeah, one yeah. hit." 
But that's that gonna take cool you like <laughs> that's gonna take you like four or five, four, like two or three rounds to get there though. No, it doesn't. Like, because like, what spirit spirit shroud is that a spell? Spirit shroud is a bonus action to cast, I believe. Okay, so you can cast that one. Then you you have. Then you can it, you if you if you bite them, you can smite on a hit. You get to choose when you do that. You can do that all in one turn, I believe. At most, Spirit Shroud is an action, and you cast it right before you go into combat. I'm pretty sure it's a bonus action spell, though. I'm, I'll let all you know I'm, in just a second. All I'm saying is it would be awesome as fuck to be in the middle of combat as the damn Fear Paladin. Be like 30 hit points down, and then crit bite the fuck out of someone, throw a smite in there, and then your your wounds just wolverine up like it's a bad. It's so fucking dumb sounding, though. <laughs> Give it, make, because that's, that's the other problem with it, is that if you don't allow if you don't have that the heal sucks it is a yeah, bonus it's action. garbage it's, it's terrible and that's that's the overall pro overall problem is that because part of the reason is because it scales with your con because it's your con mod and realistically some of the only classes that are going to be really heavily <laughs> uh doing their con mod <laughs> I don't think that's a roast. I think that's that's some sarcasm in there. I wish Ian had opinions. I have nothing but opinions. But yeah, that's that's his thing. Is I guess it's overall is like I think I think my issue with the the heal thing, the technicality, is because it doesn't make logical sense. But then it sucks because if you don't allow that, then the bite kind of sucks. It's kind of terrible. Like it's just it's not enough damage, it's not enough healing to really be worthwhile beyond like level two. There we go. The only kind of good thing about it is if you are missing half your hit points, you've got advantage on it. Yeah, which I guess that's true. But you can't nice sneak little... attack with it, so Cause it's, it's not a... technically a light weapon. Yeah. <laughs> like finesse. Yeah, not or finesse. You can. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever. But with with it as I, I wonder, are there sundering rules in D and D? Oh no. You can sunder weapons. <laughs> you fucking. Oh my God! Your teeth. <laughs> <laughs> So, oh my gosh. If, if someone calls on you that they want to sunder the weapon that just happens to be in your mouth, <laughs> goodbye your teeth <laughs> and this ability. No, I, mean, I think it all comes down to how much of a dickhead the DM is. <laughs> I mean, I, no, I'd allow it. Like, nah, this says right here that those teeth are <laughs> the weapon. Bow, you just get got with like the crowbar to the mouth, yeah. like your teeth I, I sunder. Just... I just wanted to point out when I said how much of a dickhead the DM was, I was aiming that entirely at Ian. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'd do it. I'd be like, nah, fuck your teeth. Like, fuck your teeth. I don't know. You say this, and then you're definitely like a really nice DM when you actually DM Ghost of Saltmarsh, so I think you're just full of shit. <laughs> I don't know what you mean. He's got so many not. opinions. I do have lots of opinions. <laughs> oh, and in, man. Re in response, <laughs> explain to bite luck. Odd Can you summon? Summon at least a breath weapon is AOE. <laughs> Breath weapons AOE damage at the at the very least. That's that's what I I want to be like a 98 year old damn pair that uh, just summons his teeth oh. as, his, <laughs> as his ability. <laughs> you just lose your entire arm because you were disarmed. <laughs> yeah yeah yo you have like claw weapons and somebody disarms you chop off the hand gone. Oh, poor <laughs> Four monks. <laughs> Looks like you're going to be using that attunement slide on a prosthetic. I don't, can you not hit people with nubs? <laughs> I mean, I guess it's technically part of your body. So uh, you just keep chopping off bits of them at each time you disarm them. They just can't attack for one round with that with that arm. Uh, I have a question for you guys. Stop. Uh, what, how, what would you then rate the Dampir like, out of ten? I think it's pretty cool overall. Like, there's plenty of things that they're like, if they have a free attack, it's not super great. So, I mean, I don't think that's like necessarily out of line. That that was one of the things that I was going to get on is that using your bonus action as an additional attack and it scaling off a con modifier it, makes it kind of worthless for most a lot that's of okay. characters. It does. It doesn't say it, that you can use it as a bonus action, does it? No, it's just gain a bonus to the next ability check. Oh, okay. Or attack roll. Or attack roll. Yeah. So you so just you it just says you can use it as an at as an attack. You don't get to use it as a bonus. Attack. If it was a bonus attack, if you got a, a free D4 plus con bonus attack, it'd be it'd be pretty okay for especially for classes that aren't necessarily have great ways to weaponize their bonus action every round. 
So. Yeah, but also like if you had if your con was like plus four and you even if you did one damage, that's a plus five to your next attack roll. That's still real good. Yeah, exactly. Sure. So making it so that it, you have to use an a, a, one of your attacks to do it. So is give, interesting. give the number, Ian. What is it? One through ten. Go. Uh, oh god, I've, I don't have anything to baseline go against. Doesn't matter, Dan Pierce, first one. I'm, one out I'm of ten. I'm gonna say seven, seven or eight out of ten against like all races in general. What about you, James? Uh, I was gonna say seven. Ken? Uh, yeah, six, seven. Six, six out of ten? Six. I really like the Dan Pierce. I'm gonna give it nine out of ten. I like it as a race uh, and like the aesthetic. I, I think it is awesome as fuck. Like, great fluff all kinds of shit that you could throw in there as the damn beer but like the mechanics of it need I, some... yeah I, I i split my 10 into two fives and the five first five was all fluff 100 percent great as kind of a, a concept and then mechanically it yeah needs i i it just just not enough in there to make me go oh yeah i'll do that that'll be worth a while right that's because yeah. i'm a min maxer Part of me goes like, oh man, it would be super cool. I could make this character that just goes in the ceiling and does stuff. Or I could use one of the like 15,000 ways to just fly in D&D. And it'd be so much easier. And Quick question. A 60 movie. Can you enchant your teeth? <laughs> You're going around with bling. I would like flame Shiny tongue teeth. <laughs> oh my goodness. Warpool flame teeth. There you go. Warpool teeth. Warpool teeth. They just can, rip their head off. Can you imagine biting your tongue though, with vorpal oh. teeth? Oh. You just yeah, have to. Why do you have any lips? Every time I've but bitten my tongue, it's definitely been a crit. <laughs> you know what you gotta do is you gotta get a mouth guard and you just wear that all the time, and then you go into battle and you just pull it off. Like, how ah. lame is that? You just you ch you're in a bar, so you go, oh, hi, <laughs> oh, sure, sure, sure. fuck you. Like, it's no one. That's just that how I'm picturing. Awesome. Okay. <laughs> that sounds awesome. Like, why I'm... Why do you have a muzzle on your, like, friend? Uh... <laughs> no, don't worry about it. He's a biter. The, the, <laughs> other, a thing, bite. the other thing that does kind of make the, the race seem a little bit wishy-washy is that you have all this natural type kind of, okay, you're a half vampire. Sure, I get it. And then they throw in all this other amazing fluff for you know, doing the psychic thing or the otherworldly type kind of partial mutant stuff and all this other stuff. And then they throw right back in there. Yeah, but you bite people though. Like, wait, what? Yeah. I feed off of psychic energy and I go around bite people. You suck out okay. their psychic energy <laughs> with your mouth. Okay, sure. You gotta bite them like over the eyeball <laughs> and then you just like... <sighs> but yeah, that's the last, all last right. little two cents. We got... 35 minutes to cover the other two, two more. <laughs> we got so we easy. have two more we dead here is super good so i feel like but hexblade is also right. very interesting so anybody want to want to give their first opinions on hexbloods maybe a simple definition nope nope <laughs> okay you're a part okay. hag basically is what it boils down to right you're like partially converted you're like you're in the in-between stages. Like, if you're if you want to turn somebody into a hag, you gotta turn them into a hex blood first, and then they go from hex blood to being turned into a hag. Is from what I understand it. Is how basically yeah. how it works. <clears throat> are you wait? Are you part hag or are you created by hags? Uh, um, well, it's, but you can but you they turn hex bloods into hags. It, so you're so like, basically, I think it's it's kind of implied that you are, at one point you may have made a deal with a hag. Um, and and if then as as you get older and older, the influence that they've had upon you in some way starts to turn you into a hag. Oh, okay. Yeah. I think it's like it's stage one. If, if hag is an illness, stage one hex blood. I see, so like stage one hag, stage four hag sort of deal. Gotcha. Yeah. So you like you're you don't like you're you're stuck there. Like you're a hex blood. But if if like you you chose to or if if hags chose to. They could turn you the rest of the way into a hag. That's yeah, what it, it like, seems like. And it looks like a deal is made from what I'm reading right here. It's not like, okay, so they're not they're not created. They're, there's just deals made with hags. Right. Okay. It's how hags like 
uh, re re recreate. It's how they right. make more of their kind. Yeah, because it says that hags can undertake a ritual to irreversibly transform a hexblood they created into a new hag. And then they become an NPC. I don't know. Just I just hand hand you just hand somebody a new stat block like you're a hag now. Here you go. No, God no. Why? <laughs> I don't know. It'd be funny. Why? <laughs> oh, I like the origins here. This uh, they're talking about the deals that you made with the hag. Some yeah. of these are cool. Let's go through them. What's the first one? Seeking a child, your parent made a bargain with a hag. You are the result of that arrangement. Oh. Sorry, I did it in a really dramatic way there. I, I just can't help it. <laughs> no, it's okay. It's, it's a little too close to home. <laughs> oh, no. Is that, how, is that how you were created, Kent? Yep. That's that why I'm so tall. Lot. That's why we're both so tall. What? Oh, shit. Hex blood. <laughs> The both wow. of you. Oh, to find out. <laughs> That's why I have blood. fingernails all over Jones's house and Ian's house. I do what? shed a lot of fingernails. <laughs> You'll see later on. Oh, I, I know the ability. I'm just saying. I don't. I don't. <laughs> hey, I don't remember you ever having. Listen, been th this, this is why I have a Roomba. Okay, like she picks them all up. <laughs> don't worry about it. <laughs> That one's really oh, cool. No. I, I mean, it's really straightforward, but I still think it adds a lot of flavor yeah. there, and definitely a lot of room for a lot of like future campaign like backstory stuff to, to pop up well it's like that'd be such a cool thing for it to be like you know like that's that was your origin but your character didn't know and then later on like either later into the the campaign or like that was part of the thing that spurred them off to be an adventurer was them finding out that their parents aren't really you know they're like they did not biologically give birth to them like they got you from somewhere <laughs> and you're like what right <laughs> i gotta go figure this shit out <laughs> fucking off yeah chronicles fingernails you'll see later in the uh later in the description we'll <laughs> we'll get there it's a it's a whole thing it's fucking disgusting as well <laughs> it's gross it, it is, really is it is just nasty yeah. i don't care there's really no is. way so oh, number man. two so is on to number two yeah fake kidnappers swapped you and your parents child that is <laughs> hilarious <laughs> i'm just tr trying to work around the Wait, so does that mean that your, your pet? Wait, they just you... can't recognize you. They didn't realize it's a different kid. They're just like, so oh, that's crazy. <laughs> just keep going. You're like, you're one of the, the Fae and you just, they just did a, a swap. Yes. Right. They just it's switched you, said, you, out of there. you and your parents' child. But it's not my parents. Anyway, I just got confused by pronouns. This is like a lifetime story right here. That's yeah. what this is. That's like, this is a bad like lifetime movie. Yeah. All of these could be like headlines on the, those kind of crappy <laughs> magazines. <laughs> yeah. Fake yeah. kidnappers swap me and my parents' child. <laughs> That's fucked up. A cupboard of hags lost one of their members, and I was created to replace the lost hag. Like, okay. It works for all. I, could, I feel like, like a, a lot really of these weak are really. Third will the coven <laughs> oh, well yeah. i think well i think presumably it's because you can transform a blood into a hag that it's like they were starting the process and then you like <gasps> you booked it you're like i'm out of here boys <laughs> like, yeah. you can't get you're me. very much like an investment yeah <laughs> right that's so fucked up yeah they just gotta sit here and wait how long they don't know they're just gonna wait so number four you were cursed as a child a deal with the spirits of the forest transformed you into a hex blood, now free of the curse. Oh. Wait. A deal with the spirits of the forest transformed you into a hex blood, now free of the curse. So you were originally cursed, oh. something else, and now you're not cursed, but you still have. Oh, so the hags initially cursed you. That you've now been free of that curse, but because of the influence of the hag originally, you still are a hex blood. Yeah. Something like that. That's what it sounds like. Or it's like Either the way, deal you made to like remove the curse made you a hex blood. It's like, oh, okay, yeah. we can get that curse off you, but you're still gonna change. You just won't be cursed anymore. And so, boom, now you're a hex blood. That just, does make more sense. Is I it think. badly written, or is it just us? No, I, th I, I think that's worded very weirdly. I think so. It's like the whole thing with the you and your parents' kid, and you're like, what? <laughs> this doesn't make sense. <laughs> what in the hell? 
I, I really like uh, number five just because of one word they slip in the middle and it just you go hang on wait what and it says you began life as a fake creature but an accident or crime changed you and forced you from your home <laughs> like, yeah what what <laughs> that's what happens when centaur jaywalk in bay <laughs> <laughs> This is some very serious parked, consequences. You, you double park somewhere and all of a sudden you're like, wait a minute. What, what happened? Yeah, obviously, Get out of Obviously it's talking about, I guess you are ran out or punished because of a crime or something like that. Yo, yeah, you yeah, forgot yeah. to, you fucking tax evasion. They take that shit seriously in the Fey Wild. You're just like, no. Yeah, I think it would have been better if they would have said like a serious accident or crime. Like they they needed to add that impact there. But it's just any accident or crime. I, like, I, oh, I hope stubbed my toe. Now I'm an ex. Uh, oh, I've stubbed. I've stood on a D4. Ah. <laughs> right. <laughs> I just love the idea of fucking fairy IRS just makes you a hex blood if you don't pay your taxes. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's actually, that's a really good backstory. I would love for Woody Allen to play that, that fucking anybody. character. That's I'm awesome. That. So what happened to you? I didn't pay my taxes. Aren't fake. <laughs> what? Yodok says, aren't fake cha chaotic anyway? Why did crimes matter? It's, it's just the silliness of it, I suppose. Like, <laughs> fake are chaotic, but they take taxes really seriously. <laughs> Come February and March, you better be on your shit. Right, I'm talking, talking receipts, like pay stubs. <laughs> I, no, number six, what I really like is it's just so much a departure from everything else in the list. A slighted druid transformed you and bound you to live only so long as a sacred tree bears fruit. Hmm. <laughs> Just look him dead in the eye and what? light the tree on fire. <laughs> it's like, I, it just seems so oddly specific and not related to like a hag yeah, at all. Like, I feel like that seems like it's gotta be one of those things that's just a reference to something we don't get. Almost I mean, certainly. If it's just like it's if like it's not the color in, thing. If it's not in the Dresden files, we won't know it. <laughs> <laughs> that's fair. Well, I have they, to wonder if. Slap, Reminds me of some Beauty and the Beast type kind of shit or something like, <laughs> or some crap like that. Yeah. So like some, this this something tree Disney. <laughs> shall continue to live like what? You, sh you shall remain a beast forever. Dude, I'm, you bet you turn into a tree hugger real quick. Some lumberjacks show up in your force. You just start <laughs> killing them. <laughs> like, yeah, nope. Like, why would Damn. this person ever adventure? Like, why would they just not like build a fence around oh this fucking God. tree? and just become a hermit <laughs> like Dude, can you imagine you're like okay, preparing okay. for your here's, level here's... 20 final battle and then you just drop dead because somebody cut down your tree <laughs> all right the the tree is like three feet tall and you carry it around with you and it's your most prized possession it's it's, it's a sacred <laughs> shrub right? it's, it's a small bush <laughs> it's like uh, it's like a bonsai tree time. Yeah, yeah, that's like what I was saying. It's a bond, a little sacred It's got like a single cherry on it that can't but, fall off. Well, you're fucking dead. But then, but then like one fireball and you're fucked. <laughs> yep. I'm telling you, just a picture in your mind, you and your party, you're facing off against like fucking Vecna or something. And then you just die because somebody cut down your tree. Or, or <laughs> like, not even that. What? Like that. Someone's like, someone's just walking through the woods and they take a little piss up against your tree. And now it can't bear fruit anymore. Yeah, that'd be awful. It's like, who killed him? Vecna? Nah, Paul Bunyan. <laughs> like, come on. <laughs> Some random, like, this is... goblin is like, we need this tree for wood. That's, that's, it really is out there. I feel like they had their two piles. Like, this is going in and this is, you know, not, not getting in. And then one one of these little pieces of paper made their way over into the other stack. That seems like it to me. Then, yeah. Again, the next the, what, what, of the next two, one of them is very much on very uh, what you'd expect, and the other one seems like one of those kind of very similar to the kind of children's TV program uh, hour that we have in America. Close enough. Saturday morning cartoons. There we go. So number seven is you made a deal with a hag, but they twisted your words and transformed you. Okay, simple. Fairy hags. 
Very, very yeah, simple. They're, they're, they're genie hags. Dicks. You made a deal with a hag. That should. That's really the only thing that they needed to say there. <laughs> True. <laughs> yeah, because you know hags, they're just. They always give you what you want. No strings attached. One hundred percent of the that, time. Is that not how that works? <laughs> <laughs> and then number eight, you are a child of the wilds. Animals and mysterious whispers were the only family you ever knew. Just what? Animals and what? <laughs> Peace yes, on trays. Animals like and mysterious Kill whispers. Do it, Timmy. Do it. Timmy. Like, oh, yes, whispers in my head. <laughs> like, who, who are you? I'm your brother. <laughs> you, just, you just have fucking imaginary. Like, that's it. You had animals and imaginary friends. That's what that said. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I would obviously imagine it would be some sort of, like, shitty dark wood where, like, you know, spirits and stuff probably manipulated you and maybe <laughs> some used to you along the way. Along the oh. Yodok says, a hey, schizophrenic I, I... Tarzan. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> You're not wrong. That That's actually what happened. None of the gorillas talked to him. They just, fucking just lost his fucking mind. mental illness. Oh, man. It's like ruining oh, your favorite Disney movie. Really? Yeah. <laughs> Who's Tarzan? Somebody's out there's favorite Disney movie. Get out of here. <laughs> Exploit trades. Miss... Go ahead. Go ahead, James. I was just no. I was just saying. I know someone who Tarzan is their favorite Disney movie. Yeah, can't that's why she's my ex girlfriend. <laughs> wow. It's fair. Well, it's good. Re I hope that's that not, was the that's reason. Not why. Oh. Well. Yes. Okay, it's blood traits, baby. Fey and humanoid. Their type, Fey and humanoid. Yep. Are, are there a lot of unique things that affect only Fey? I feel like the undead bit, the undead one's way more effective. Detect like, good and evil. Like, yeah. Detect good and evil, you are found by that spell being defined as a Fey. So. I thought you had to choose the type. For detect good and evil. Like no, I think you detect for. all celestials, fiends, undead, and fey within a certain radius. Yeah, you do. Interesting. Mm -hmm. I guess that's fair. So that's that's an interesting interaction. Yeah, I can't think of anything else though. There's think... no turn fey. Yeah, no, you don't have turn fey. <laughs> <laughs> I can't think of any fey. any other spells. <laughs> Chat, do y'all have any other spells that affect specifically fey? Or not, maybe not specifically Fey, but affect Fey in general. I can think of a ton that affect undead. Yeah. I, yeah. I think they're pretty much the same. Yeah. Interesting. So. <laughs> He's elf only armor. Is racial restricted items really a thing in 5th edition? Kind of. Mm. The dual scimitar is light restricted because they said you can use it if you're another race, but you might get assaulted by other elves that are like, that's an elf weapon. And you're like, that's <laughs> stupid. What do you mean? But see, that's like, that's just free XP, though. That, yeah, that's when you just start getting racing. You're like, all right, bring it, knife here. And you just like go to the scrap. You're like, bet. Yeah, I took this from an elf. What of it? You just beat the shit out of him. <laughs> I mean, like, what is it? Now uh, I've got two and you're just dual wielding them. Satyrs are. Fae. They're fine with it. They're not even <laughs> technically human. They're just fae. Like, you're a fae. Get out of here. I don't think it really means too much. Not like undead, of course. Yeah, undead is, I think, way more. I'm I, like, there's no buffs for being undead. There's a lot of detriments for being undead. You know, I want to go off of something Kent said earlier, actually, with, with what he said, like, there, there could have been a lot of really unique stuff with Damp here because they could, because all of these different vampires, right, and the, all of these different abilities. It could have done the same for Hexblood, I feel, because your types are Fey and Undead. You could have easily said, okay, you're, you know, of a Satyr lineage, and then given you abilities based off of that. Or you're a, uh, what are, what are some other Fey, general Fey, or different types red of cap. Undead. A re <laughs> red yeah, cap. Feel, you gotta buddy. go straight for Red Cap there, buddy. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> Very on brand. Hey, man, we in here. <laughs> Highest murder. <laughs> Good. It does, I know what you mean, though. I know it does feel very restricted to being an heir of a hag. It, 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 but also, it has some better hexblood traits that I, I feel are a little bit better and more interesting. Yeah. yeah. Yep. 
I, I think it's supposed to be a callback to the other kind of changeling, honestly, to where a changeling was a like half hag or whatever. Oh yeah. In pre in like long time ago. Oh, that's some lore I don't know. Yeah. Back in the day. I feel there like you this go. is what it's supposed to be. Yeah, I am. <laughs> ah. Old ass bitch. <laughs> and ye old Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta speak in. Back in minus two edition. Back when we only had D sixes. Yeah. That was it. That's it. That's we had that. to adventure uphill both ways in the snow. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Oh, God. But fair resistance for resilience. My bad. Uh, you have advantage on saving throws you make to avoid or end the charm condition on yourself. Right. Is, isn't that the same? Yes. It's very similar, but not exactly the same as the elf stuff. It's Fey ancestry and elves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fey ancestry. I think it is. I think it's exactly the same. Is it exactly? Is it exactly? Yeah. I think so. Yeah. I think you, I think uh, half elves also get it right. Right. I, I just couldn't remember right. if it was Similar. exactly the same or not. I think that fey ancestry. I think just means that you can't be put to sleep. I think as well. Oh, that too. Oh yeah, so, it, it gives, gives you so. Time. This one doesn't do that for you. Uh, fey and can I scroll down, please? Uh, Fancy, you have advantage on saving throws against being charmed, and magic can't put you to sleep. That's Fey Ancestry. So it's yeah, very so it's similar, but not exactly the same. Right. So Fey Ancestry is actually better. You're an actual fucking Fey, but you can be put to sleep. <laughs> it's because you are anti-humanoid. <laughs> oh, hags are old. They they go to sleep real easy. <laughs> Bruh, oh, <laughs> you gotta drink their insure before they hit the sack. <laughs> yeah, but it's like insure, but it's like a Bloody Mary with actual like baby blood in it. Right. But, but here's the thing. Instead of a sick of celery, it's a baby arm just hanging out of the top of it. <laughs> here's the thing, though, that unlike Fey Ancestry, Fey Ancestry only gives you advantage against being charmed in the first place. This gives you advantage on against being charmed and to end the effect when you get to re when you get to reroll your saving throw. Sure. So it a lot it makes it easier to end the charm effect. Right. You're the one fey that sleeps I'm for all fey. <laughs> that's the th well that's the thing is like elves can do like their trance thing. Hags don't get that. <laughs> they still got to take a nappy poo. That's true, I guess. That is yeah. true. So hex magic you can cast the Disguise Self spell and, and Hex spells with this trait. Intelligence, Wisdom, or Charisma is your spellcasting ability for these spells, which is pretty cool to me. Choose when you gain this lineage. Once you cast either of these spells with this trait, you can't cast that spell with it again until you finish a long rest. You can also cast these spells using any spell slots you have. Man, that seems really nice. That, I yeah. think that, that would be cooler for a spellcaster who's not a... Uh, warlock because hex is such a useful spell to have yeah um, that's the whole reason for the subclass thing being able to cast hex is like the thing <laughs> yeah like but i mean it, it'd be really this would be super useful for any class but yeah. it's just that one once once a day yeah but it's but yeah you get it once for free but then you can use your slots so i mean it's even it's even good for uh it's even oh. good for warlocks because the warlocks get a free extra cast and they don't have to spend uh the the spell known to learn hex they just got it so it's just good across the board and also i guess uh, if, it's, it's, if it says you can cast these spells you can that will count towards like paladins and rangers as well what, 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 i mean yeah for for they would have them but now i'm curious could you i don't know if you could use it to smite I don't think you'd be allowed to use the smite. Oh, oh no, yeah, no, no. But like, like you could then, could, could for example, yeah. a ranger then cast hex and hunter's mark on, no. because they're both concentration spells. That is fair. Yeah. I was about to say, I was like, I don't know where you take it on ranger. However, taking it on paladin could be really good, especially if you're not a vengeance paladin, so you don't have access to hunter's mark. Taking it on a barbarian. Just go yeah. in there and oh, go God. fucking hex city. Like, or, or what, are you, you're going to make a con save and not get it? <laughs> right, exactly. That's actually a good point. That'd be pretty crazy. But man, yeah, so that's that's really, like, that innate spellcasting is, 
uh, like across the board pretty useful and then because you can cast it extra times if you feel like it it makes it good for casters as well uh jonesy can you read out the the gross one god damn it you want me to you want me to read out magic token <laughs> all right chronicles if you're still in chat magic token is what we were talking about earlier when we were talking about fingernails so you'll see it right there at the top of your screen but magic token as an action you can harmlessly pull out one of your nails a tooth or a lock of hair this token is imbued with magic until you finish a long rest while the token is imbued in this way, you can use an action to send a telepathic message to the creature holding or carrying the token, as long as you are on the same plane of existence and within 10 miles of it. The message can contain up to 25 words. So, gross. <laughs> time for fingernails, time for magic teeth. Yeah. I am just saying, I am just saying, technically, if you were, if you had a dampier buddy who fed on teeth, infinite tooth supply because they grow back. Uh, like, I, I got you, homie. Eh, have a two. But you can only do it once. You can only do it once um, per long rest. Yeah, but if they like need a little snack, you know, like you're just like, oh man, you're feeling a little hungry. Let me just, here you go, have a tooth. It'll it's grow back. It's so more. nasty. The thought of pulling out a nail is so repulsive to me, dude. There's, me too. But it, it says it's painless, so. I don't care. The thought of it is repulsive. <laughs> Okay, but okay, so you have to either pull out your hair, pull out an entire fingernail, or pull out an entire tooth. Which one you would just you look prefer? really weird because you pull out a front tooth. Hair. So you just have a gap. Hair, one hundred percent. But you have to do like a big chunk of it. Oh. Jones, if I'm, if I'm ever a playing a hex blood in your campaign, I'm specifically pulling out fingernails. That bothers me on a level. <laughs> just to fuck with you. I know, I know exactly. It's there's a scene in the comic books, uh, the Ultimates, where Hawkeye's been captured, and he and the way he kills everyone whilst he's been captured is he rips out his own fingernails and uses them as projectile weapons to kill his captors. It's horrid. Jesus Christ. Disgusting. Jesus. Yeah, the, the, co the comic, the Ultimate version of the Avengers universe is fucked up. <laughs> R so removing a fingernail is just it? straight repulsive and teeth as well because i always think of like horror movies when the protagonist starts losing their teeth and they're like pulling it out and the blood gorse no I'd just rather do hair um, just... uh, uh, you can't you can't collect them damn chronicles because they uh, they uh they, they they like they just fade or like crumble or whatever after the fact it, 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 uh, only when you uh it only says that you, it crumbles away after uh, you look through it Oh, that's a good point. And it your says, step in, in regard to your own, so afterward, the token's harmlessly destroyed. It actually, you're right, it doesn't specify. If you, so if so you, you don't do that, do you just have a bunch of them? We, yeah, if like, one a day, I guess it implies that you can go, cool, well, I've just got to remember where all my teeth are. Oh man, I, dude, I would just do that one a day, and then I just have a bag full of my teeth. And I'd rattle it at people. <laughs> threateningly oh, like you want to know where i got all these teeth and i'd use it as part of an intimidation check I mean, <laughs> like, I, if, where do you think all these teeth like, came from if it was like real life i'd like give a tooth and then like take a photo of them with the tooth and then i'd have like a go oh cool i can but then i guess if i could i'd have a phone so i could just go call them rather than send them a message ah oh, but the teeth <laughs> What a, what a I, I want to move away so badly right now. I don't want to keep talking about this. It's it's it's, it's ten ten to uh, nine where you live. It's ten to two in the morning where I live. <laughs> that man's a tooth sack. Let's go. So yeah, let's. Bro, that man's a scared little shit. So that's a good point. We're nothing complete. <laughs> Can you smite with the tooth tokens though? Oh, I think they're. <laughs> I don't think yeah, th this this is an interesting ability that I feel like should just be a spell and not a racial feature. It's so weird. I love it. I just I love the idea of the tooth sack. <laughs> like I think it's neat and cool, but okay. Not like if if sense. I was playing a character that wanted to have this ability, I would probably already be a spellcaster and just use a spell to do that same thing you know what it kind of reminds me of it kind of reminds me of the uh artificer ability the how they imbue the, the magic. magical trinkets yeah 
Yeah, it kind of reminds me of that. But gross. <laughs> like, <laughs> but gross. Like that sometimes. sometimes you just and gotta it, rattle the tooth, the tooth sack. And the fact that it like that. So do, does it? Does it say that it always goes away after twenty four hours? Nope. No. It, it's oh, only okay. it, it only it says grows in twenty four hours. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So yeah, yeah. You can you can just you can just be like, okay, well, I'm just not gonna have this teeth every day or this tooth every day. Well, you know what? I bet you'd always have really nice teeth because you could just like rotate them out and they just grow back like super new and sparkly clean, right? Yeah, but you're part hag and hag just have you... fucked up teeth, so it probably just grows grows back fucked up. It doesn't say I anything mean, about your teeth. Not if you were you... not if you were a sorcerer, like charisma's through the roof. <laughs> I'm just saying fuck brushing your teeth you go to bed at night you just pull out all your teeth and then just go oh that's what i'm saying <laughs> but no but that wouldn't work because only one of them would grow back i was saying you rotate them you just uh, pull out a different one every I, day no i would have the same one and i'd have a, a gold tooth and then just say and then pop the gold one in and then i look like a gangster like <laughs> rapper person <laughs> Jeez. hell yeah i'm like, so cool okay. clearly all right we have eight minutes let's wrap up reborn in eight okay. minutes Rapid so fire Yep. What is reborn? Quick definition. Uh, zombie. Undead Frankenstein. Zombie. You're basically Frankenstein. Undead Frankenstein. Those are your hot words. Zombie undead Frankenstein. That's what a reborn is. You're either an undead or a construct. So you're yeah. either a flesh golem or just a zombie. Oh, does it give you the option? Yeah. Yeah. yeah it, down, it says down on the bottom it, uh, that your type is either humanoid as well as construct or undead. Cool. So. Lost memories. <laughs> So you, this is like your origins and stuff like we were doing on the other ones. Memory number uh, no, one. That's actually different. Oh, is it no, very so different? Re reborn um, have like interruptions in their lives or like in their brain. Um, so they've got missing memories from their, their mind, basically. Uh -huh. yeah. So this like, it's something that'll just like pop up occasionally. Um, cause you can, uh, it's, it's when you, cause they don't sleep. So rather than sleep, you can just vibe. And sometimes when you're just vibing, boom. Like uh, Warforged, they just sit there instead yeah, of sleeping. Hang, they just hang out. Uh, but... So just a memory pops up. So number one being of these lost memories, you recall a physically painful moment. What mark or scar on your body does it relate to? <clears throat> so a lot of these are like how you died or something. Uh, what I like about this is it says when you decide to have a dreamlike vision, roll on this table. Yeah. So you get to decide if... when you have these memories. Yeah, it's like, do I want to have some backstory moment right now? You could you could go Vampire the Masquerade on it. You're all in that one, and you just trigger one of these things or all on the table. <laughs> That's really good. <laughs> That's a good point. Because I think it also says, like, at DM discretion as well. Like, DMs can just give them to you if they feel like it. I would, because I think that makes sense. Even if they don't say it. Even if it's not specified. I do that anyways without this being a race. <laughs> yeah, you do. <laughs> I, I just just realized that you, you might want to rattle through these lost memories because they also have the origins. Yeah, <laughs> so <laughs> that brings us to number two, which is a, a memory causes you to shed a tear. Is it bitter or cheerful? Does recalling it make you feel the same way? I, I'm just going to go through. There's no point sitting here talking about every single one. Number three, you recall a childhood memory. What about that event or who you were and still influences you? And number four, a memory brings you with it the voice of someone once close to you. How do they advise you? Number five, you recall enjoying something that you can't stand doing now. What is it? Why don't you like it now? Number six, a memory carries a vivid smell or sensation. What are you going to do to recreate that experience? Number seven, you faintly remember a place that couldn't possibly exist. What is this vision? How does it make you feel? Number eight, you experience a memory you're, you're certain isn't your own. How does it seem unnatural? Could it be a glimpse of a past nightmare or something worse? I'm just saying these all sound like questions you're being asked by like your zombie therapist. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Throw that out there real quick. They're they're very back vague and backstory esque. Like yeah, this is yeah. There's no. I, I don't think there's anything unique about any of these. Not not for me at least. Um, yeah. Uh, talking about the origins. No, 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 no. We're talking about the the, the lost things. memories. Yeah. There's not. There's uh, nothing super like, unique about them. Yeah. They're like yeah, they're flavor because you're either undead or constructed of different pieces of people right so, so which brings us to their origins right reborn orange oranges <laughs> ah the reborn oranges reborn oranges <laughs> this, this orange looks a bit like it's gone off <laughs> like it's gone off <laughs> reborn origins rather you were magically resurrected but something went wrong frankenstein 
hope yep. Rob is listening to this. Well, that the, the magic of the rosary, <laughs> but then I'd say uh, that he, it, Frankenstein has more of a combination of one and two because two is stitches bind your body's mismatched pieces, and your memories come from a jumble of different lives. Yeah, but he's, two, like, he's, yeah, he's a Frankenstein. Cut. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's that's definitely closer to Frankenstein physically. I don't know if Frankenstein was ever like had multiple different memories though. <laughs> yeah. It's it's the first part, it's that you're made out of different pe pieces right. of different people though. I, I really like that as a concept though, like having different people's memories and how that your character would react to them. That's really cool. Yeah, but I mean, does it come from that body part? Like Oh no, my foot's remembering stepping on a Super Lego. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, revolver yeah. ocelite shit. <laughs> my my genitals are remembering something. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! I wait a minute. Perhaps, how, perhaps how did I get that also, Perhaps if you were also to remove your pants, it would jog my memory. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what a great reborn shot at life. <laughs> oh god. Brings us number three. After clawing oh. free from your grave, you realize you have no memories except for a single name. That's so great if you just want to be like, I don't feel like writing a backstory. Here's one <laughs> name. Go. You just hand it off to your DM like a relay. Like, that's great because like you could be like, you could use it as your own name, but the DM could be like, ah, ha ha. Yeah. <laughs> Jeff, that would be crazy. I like, would. Logan. I would love that as a DM. Yeah. That's, TBH. that's basically what I've done for you with fucking Gandalin. Is I was like, I have a really bare bones for my backstory. Here you go, Alex. Do what you I just, will. Number four, I've just seen looks. So I just, I've got this great image in my head. You were a necromancer's undead servant for years. One day your consciousness returned. This sounds familiar. I just, I just, <laughs> I don't know, I, but I just really like him. That it's just go. It's like, it's like, like, can you go and get my shoes, please? And just go. No. Don't want to interrupt yeah, you, James, like, but DM Chronicles, quick. thank you so much for the sub, my guy. That is so appreciated. Thank you. Much love. Sorry, sorry to interrupt our flow there. I know we're right here at the end, but thank you so much, man. That is that is so appreciated. What a guy. I'm to forgive him now for that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you, you made him feel so bad. <laughs> That he had to sub to the channel, James. <laughs> Apologize to him now. <laughs> if, if anything, you should be thanking me. <laughs> I will off stream, but apologize now. <laughs> yeah, say you're sorry. <laughs> Robin, oh really god. Sorry. So number five, you awoke in an abandoned laboratory alongside complex designs for for clockwork organs. So that's like that's one of the one of the you are a construct yeah. ones, right? Yeah. Pretty clearly. Which is cool. I like that they did that they did kind of separate them. Like you've got some that work for both, and then some that clearly work better for one than another. Yeah. Right. That kind of reminds me of the uh, the construct chick from Pillars of Eternity. Of just being a dead chick who just woke up inside of a metal body. It's like, oh, I'd really like to kill the people who murdered me now. <laughs> it's fairly good convenient. motivation. So that was number five. We're going to move on to number six. You were re released after being petrified for generations. Your memories have faded, though, and your body is not what it once was. You're the I, t are you the Tin Man? I swear, what? I had I had this. I played this character once um, ages ago, um, where basically I, it was like a I've been turned to stone, but like a trap or something, um, and been left that way for ages. And then some people found a, a scroll and made me human again stone to flesh well um but i i remembered everything so i'm better than this one <laughs> i'm better than <laughs> these guys the, the, fluff, That's what James said. Jesus. the fluff of number seven makes a lots of interactions seem pretty crazy like that too. you know using thieves tools you just wiggle your pinky in there a little bit go ahead and read you it know, out man uh, your body hosts a possessing spirit that shares its memories and replaces your missing appendages with phantasmal limbs. It's like a really gross Inspector Gadget. <laughs> Man, that was not where I, my, I was going with that, but I mean... Not wrong. That, that would make a pretty cool flavored Astral Monk, I think. Well, that's what I was actually about to oh, say. Because, yeah. like... Cause, like you're an astral monk, so you have this astral limb all the time. What if you just like you cross 
one your regular arm with one of your fake arms and then even more astral arms pop out you're like i already have one but i'm gonna make more to kick your ass so <laughs> screw you i was Number. just like, thinking of beast with his fluff like okay roll to unlock the door oh all right you got a 27 Whoop. You just reach through, unlock it on the other side. Like, okay, there you go. These tools got gotcha. you. <laughs> All right, number eight, I find slightly nightmare inducing. It's like a no sleep Reddit post. Ooh, wait a minute. <laughs> what the oh, I didn't read it until just now. That's horrifying. In, in public, he passes as an unremarkable individual, but you can feel the itchy straw stuffing inside you. So the other one was the Tin Man. This is just fucking. Oh my God. This is all Wizard of Oz. That's what this shit is. You just That's to terrifying. Home. If I only had a brain. <laughs> Wait, DMCA. Got to watch out with that. <laughs> but that, that's so spooky. Oh God, that's awful too. Now I'm now I'm thinking about it. That's guys. I'm so itchy all the time. That might be Please worse than the fingernails. Any fire spells near me, I will <laughs> die. <laughs> I, genuinely, I'm feeling really itchy now. <laughs> Oh, all right. Let's just move on. Let's just move on to their traits. Okay. 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 Thank you. Humanoid as well as construct or or undead, like we said, like we said earlier. Construct. Con that's what I'm I said. Choosing construct. Yeah. I'm uh, oh, construct. you're choosing construct. I was like, did I say something wrong? Yeah, I would almost always choose construct because being an undead has so many things that go against you. It's yeah. Unfortunately. If you want to hear more about that, rewind by like an hour. Yeah. Cause yeah, but fun. also construct grants you immunities to certain spells. There you go. Well, no, it says if it affects one, it'll affect the other. Yeah, right. okay, yeah. So you are a oh, humanoid, okay. so you still get hit by those things. But okay. still, All right. fuck being an undead. <laughs> <laughs> right. Speed is 30 feet, normal. Dark vision, blah, 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 whatever. Deathless, deathless nature. Okay. And this is the, the unique, unique stuff. You've escaped death, a fact represented by the following benefits. You have advantage on saving throws against disease and being poisoned. And you have resistance to poison damage. That's pretty cool. Oh, always yeah. love that. Always love that. Yeah. Super Fuck cool. Poison damage. <laughs> you have advantage this... on death saving throws, which is that nutty. That one's really fucking crazy. That that's, one is good. That's nutty to me. Yeah. You don't need to eat, drink, or breathe. Like. It's his eye. The flesh war forged. <laughs> right. Like people. <laughs> People pay money for ion stones, ion stones, ion, however you want to say it, yeah, to, to not be able to do these things. And then uh, the last one, you don't need sleep and magic can't put you to sleep. So you do gain some of that construct immunity. Um, yeah. You can finish a long rest in four hours if you spend those hours in an inactive, motionless state during which you retain consciousness. You just stare off into space for four hours. Like, right. That's, we've all been there. This is fact. Fair Fair enough. I still need Half sleep at the end of it, though. <laughs> Half the money. I mean, I... The day. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus. Probably only four. Yeah, exactly. Only four hours. So, I mean, if you have one person watch, watch, you can stay up the rest of the night and be your party's watchman. Well, it says you still re retain consciousness. Like. Oh, yeah, like that's fair. So stuff. you can you can just be the party's watchman. Easy peasy. Every hey, argument you get into is a straw how, man how argument. How dare you say that? I, I'm, that makes me kind of angry. <laughs> <laughs> it's awful. <laughs> Knowledge from a past life. You temporarily remember sporadic glimpses of the past, perhaps faded memories from ages ago or previous life. When you make an ability check that uses a skill, you can roll a d6 and add the number to the roll check. You can use this feature a number of times equal to your proficiency bonus and you gain all expended uses. When you finish the long rest so that's that's really useful yeah you, you, when i when i first saw the name of this i was scrolling through and i read that one first and i was like excited for it being like a reincarnation type kind of race and i was like oh yeah match from coffee for will of time awesome and i'm like oh okay you're a zombie never mind <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that'd be fucking sick <laughs> that's that's pretty cool that's basic i mean that's inspiration equal to your yeah. proficiency that's pretty nice well, low level inspiration. Yeah, well, I mean, but, but still. still, it's still really good because you can just equal your proficiency. So if you want to be a skill monkey, like if you're already a rogue or a bard and then you have this, you're like, I am good at things. Right. Go fuck yourself. <laughs> like You can do this and a bard can and your bard can inspire you. Having those two things uh, stack would be awesome. 
Did you get a D6 and whatever they got? My tooth. My tooth remembers walking up a tree. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> That's that's awful. I'm, I'm sorry. If you're gonna make a Frankenstein's monster, you're not gonna get like individual teeth from different people, are you? You're gonna get a full set. <laughs> just my mouth. Remember maybe just going up maybe a just tree. from the neck up. It's just this one person's head. I don't know. I, mean, I, 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 I want them to have like you have like an old person head, and so they had to go find like a set of chompers from somebody else to stick in there, so you had teeth. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> <Just like. laughs> I mean, you might get like, because like, you might want new eyes and a new right. brain and stuff, but everything else comes as a set. Oh, God. Yeah, see, only the prettiest teeth are like, oh man, this dude had fucked up teeth. Let's go find some better ones to put in this head. <laughs> That's so well, awful. Clearly, uh, the, what's it? The, the, they, Oddox, uh, and I have different um, views on um, mad science. <laughs> yeah, there's like different priorities. I want them to have pretty teeth. I Who cares about their teeth? I, I do! Time. I want to build it, you know, quickly and efficiently. I'm just saying, you technically don't even need the teeth because they don't have to eat, so... All right, everybody in chat, get active in the poll. What's your favorite of all these? And we'll we'll kick it off. Ian or James, favorite of all three of these? Let's hear oh, it. Um, I actually... Now, uh, uh, if I, for flavor-wise, I like the damp Dampire, but uh, Reborn, I think, is the one I probably have more fun playing. I, I, I really like a lot of, of what is going on there. Um, Reborn is my number one pick. Reborn number one. Ian? Oh, man. That's that's hard. I, that, it's hard because mine, like, I do, well, I do like Dampiers, and they're cool. It comes down between the Hexblood and the and the Reborn for me. And, but I, I think I just end up liking the fluff for the Damp, uh, not the Dampier, for the Reborn better. Like, being like either this undead or like I just there's so many options that could just be for such cool storytelling experiences with a character but like yeah I was dead up until like half an hour ago so right reborn all the way oh man reborn I did not all three of you one-sided <laughs> say we know what you're gonna say Jonesy you're gonna say damper exactly I am a basic bitch to the max I am absolutely gonna say dampier <laughs> twilight favorite book I know your book. All right, Kent. I didn't want to have to kick you off hard knock dice, but you have, you have. <laughs> yo, yo, let's go. Oh, I'm getting Morgan. ganged up on by the reborn simp shrimps. Sorry, twitched <laughs> by the reborn ah, shrimps. Who you called a shrimp? <laughs> oh man. Fair, at least, we got two at least six foot two boys in yeah, here. Yeah. Hey, shrimps. Who said that? Shrimp. Now, and you, and you, hey, you can't call me a shrimp without calling yourself a shrimp because we're about the same height. So screw you, Alan. I'm not saying shrimp to imply size. I don't care. I'm saying shrimp because Twitch restricts me from saying what I want to say. That's too bad. What's it you, you want to say? We'll talk about it off stream <laughs> before before TOS smacks me. <laughs> We all want to hear it, Jones. <laughs> well, <laughs> you, you're not going to. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't expect everybody else to also be mostly a fan of the Reborn. I think the Reborn are so cool. Yeah, I, I was surprised too. I kind of think the Hexblood are garbage outside of it. <laughs> honestly. Outside like, of what? Outside of them being able to have other classes have the ability to cast the hex spell. Yeah, like the the. I, I think the abilities are cool, but for for me, it's all about the character, which I have to imagine, and I just it, I find I find that one a lot more restricting, kind of in terms of idea-wise and character-wise than the other ones. Yeah. Well, there's so much mystery to the reborn because it's like it's so easy to be like, yeah, you're not really sure about most of what you are, or like what your backstory, like how you came about. Like, there's just so much interesting exploration to be done with them. Uh, guys, I don't want to, you know, point fingers, but Jonesy's about to cry because we're not giving any love to <laughs> damn it. So listen, listen, listen. I can, <laughs> I like what I like. Longingly to the distance. <laughs> no, no, I'm sorry. I, I was looking at the uh, these the poll results and these bunch of shrimps voting for Reborn. <laughs> but Reborn does win it, uh, and Dampier and Hexblood tie, tying it up at uh, not first. So. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, reborn is is a clear favorite here. Yeah, I think Dampier has the best fluff, hands down, by and large. But like, it's just weak right now. I mean, like Spider Climb, 
nah, I'm good. <laughs> I mean, I'll pick something else. Maybe that's the difference. Is mechanically, I'm not, I'm not so inclined or really to worry about mechanics when it comes to the comes to this stuff. It's all about backstory for me. I, I've, I mean, I've made weak as shit characters before, and have no shame in it. So, I, 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 I there's absolutely no shame in it. You've got to create a character for, that's going to make the best story. That's my first rule. Oh yeah, no, they Didn't have you? terrible stories too. I'm just really bad at this game. <laughs> I, I mean, I mean, you. I'm playing a monk, so I feel you in the not playing characters that are very. Good. Yeah, Bart goes around with a mace when he has a zero strength modifier, but also has a so dagger. Funny. But and also has a dagger <laughs> with a plus two dex mod. In fairness, t tomorrow uh, I'm playing with uh, DM Chronicles, and I've made a new character, which is a uh, turtle monk, because I wanted to make a, a ninja turtle. <laughs> hey man, awesome. sometimes you just gotta do it for the lulls, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's, why not? I feel I know, like you I could probably run like a really good one shot where you had like a bunch of reborn and like. <laughs> I thought you had to say, I thought you had to say four turtles who are ninjas. <laughs> I also was thinking that too, to be completely honest. We should, I should, I, we should, I should run that. We, we, I've seen four people have talked about them doing it before. <laughs> uh, Maybe an idea there, Chronicles. Maybe an idea. <laughs> Don't think a Rooney. Yeah, you'll have to think on that one. Let me know. Let me know when that one pops up. But <laughs> with that, we are going to get out of here for tonight. It has been a good time. I'm gonna let these guys shout their stuff out, say who they are one more time before we get out of here. So kick it off. Whoever wants to take it first. All my shit is here, so then, watch our stuff. Oh, it's uh, excellent. Thank you. Good, good, good work, good plugging. Uh, I'm James again, and follow me on uh, Dragon Wheel 00 uh, for, for, well, sometimes me playing video games while I'm drunk. But mostly uh, fun, silly one shot games and uh, a retroverse campaign, which is starting tomorrow. Um, and these two guys' campaigns. <laughs> <Woo>! <laughs> Everybody show up on Mondays, like, and I would say don't show up on Saturdays, but also <laughs> you show up on Saturdays. So. <laughs> I've posted James' stream in there. Make sure you go drop him a follow. Drop us a follow if you have not yet. We really appreciate you guys hanging out with us. We are Hard Knock Dice. We stream every... God, what now? Wednesday, Wednesday. Monday, Wednesday. Oh, <laughs> we got one. Monday, Wednesday, and Saturday. Monday, we kick it off with the Ghost of Salt Marsh campaign. Wednesday, we do this Tavern Talks where we just talk about a bunch of various and, you know, sundry D&D topics. And I move my... Uh, background on obs so it covers everybody's camera um but yeah we'll have a topic next week i don't know what it is follow us on twitter to find out what it may be um and then on saturdays we do our eberron campaign which i dm and these guys play in so drop a follow and we also have youtubes if you you know you can't watch a four hour D, &D session like you know everybody can do so i think that's it guys that's all i got do what? Are, aren't jobs aren't spot? Jobs. <laughs> yeah, if, <laughs> sure. <laughs> we'll go with that. <laughs> go, go watch us at your job, and don't get caught. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> thank you so Bye. much for tuning in, everybody. <laughs> much love. Bye-bye. Y'all take it easy. Peace. Bye-bye.